the Honorable Speaker, Ms. Sufuba. We are now going to observe a moment of silence, a moment of prayers and meditations. Thank you, honorable members. We may be seated. <laughs> honorable members, I would like to take a moment <clears throat> to welcome all the guests, acknowledge the Premier of the Free State Province, Honorable Mkole Sidukana, the Deputy Speaker of the Free State Legislature, Honorable Lucy Mapena, the Chairperson House of Committees in Absentia, Honorable William Bulwan. Chief Whip of the Legislature, Honorable Tembeni Nangisa, the Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Roy Jangelson, the Leader of Government Business, Honorable Totoma Kume, members of the Free State Legislature, members of the Executive Council, members of the Parliament, members of the NCOP present, the Executive Mayor of Lijuel District Municipality, Honorable Councillor Veronica Ntakumbana, <clears throat> the Honorable Mayor, Executive Mayor of Machabeng Local Municipality, Councillor Tandukolo Kalipa, traditional leadership present, leaders of local government and Salga, leaders of the ANC and the Alliance, leaders of the Democratic Alliance and Economic Freedom Front, Freedom Fighters, Yoba Kanshap, the leaders of um, Freedom Front Plus, leaders of trade unions present, sector stakeholders and professional bodies, members of the Provincial Speakers Forum, heads of Chapter 9 and 10 institutions present, business leaders, families and friends, civil society organizations, members of faith-based organizations, media houses present, and digitally covering our proceedings, people of the free state present here, and those following online broadcasts. Kaufela Kiridumelang. Without any further ado, I will request the Deputy Speaker to take the chair.
Honorable members, before we proceed to motion one, I wish to remind the House that the vote for the Free State Legislature is not subjected to the debate. We proceed to motion one. The Secretary shall read motion one. That leave be granted for the second reading debate on the appropriation bill number two of 2023, presentation of vote two Free State Legislature. The vote before the House is vote two, Free State Legislature. The Honorable Speaker, Mezanele Sufuwe, may address the House. Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Melusi Mapena, Honorable Mkoli Sidukwana, the Honorable Members of the Free State Legislature, the Honorable Members of the Executive Council, the Chief Whip of the Legislature, the Honorable Deputy Chief Whip, the Chairperson of Committees, Honorable Members of the Free State Legislature, distinguished guests, members of the Fourth Estate, Dumelang Sanbonani, good day, We are gathered here today, one year before the general elections. The seventh democratic legislature will mark a great progress since our constitutional democracy. The legislature intends to build upon this progress and our healthy developmental agenda to strengthen nation building and unite our people. It is our legacy. Over the past four years, we have built a good legacy. We've covered so much ground together, yet our path is lengthening before our eyes. Our goal of building a flourishing egalitarian society must not succumb in the face of adversity. At any rate, the fruits of our work must stand the test of time. From the successful coordination of the Free State Province, Ad province Address in Bloemfontein, the provincial budget speech in Harib Dam, to the taking the legislature to the people in the form of departmental votes tabling across five districts, we can claim that we are on course with legislature having assumed all constitutional responsibility in the events of the legislature. We enter the workers' month 2023 exactly three years since the advent of the COVID-19 disease outbreak with its devastating effects on humanity and economy. The kind of lessons the workers of the world can deduct from the impact of COVID-19 is that they are all connected. Workers across the world work tirelessly to protect humanity from destruction by producing ideas and innovations that brought the scourge to a halt. During this month, we will take forward the legacy, quicken the progress made in protecting the workers' rights and social justice. We will therefore use the upcoming workers' parliament to take stock of progress made since our last summit to address key concerns raised by different federations in our province. Honorable Deputy Speaker, we draw lessons from the bleak picture that characterized the past few months. Among the events of the few months is the Jarras Fontaine disaster where man tailing dam wall collapsed, causing devastation, loss of lives, and many injured. It, is also brought, it, it, it also brought other pressures to the local economy, such as prolonged health conditions, the environmental degradation and destruction of required infrastructure for sustainable livelihood. This kind of disaster was the first in the province since the Mary Spirit disaster of the 22nd February 1994 in Melody, Virginia, in which, in which 17 people lost their lives and several houses were demolished. Consistent with our legacy of oversight, we joined other stakeholders to provide relief to the area as soon as the crisis occurred. We will remain in close contact with the people of Jarras Fontaine by working closely with the provincial government, the municipality, and social partners until the social conditions of the people improve convincingly. <clears throat> Honorable members, during the period under review, the legislature bemoaned the loss of our hard, of our hard working member and chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Cooperative Governance 
traditional affairs and office of the Premier, we will always remember Honourable Smith, otherwise known as Sandana, for his commitment to the struggle, for his love for the people and his idiosyncratic jokes. A special dedication to another former member of this House, Mr. Pule Herbert Isaac Tate or simply known, simply the best as he was affectionately known, who left us unceremoniously two months ago. Not only did we become the best performing province in the metric results during his tenure, but he also engraved the legacy of success. He invigorated a sense of belief in our children that everyone has the potential to become the best. We will remain indebted to his wonderful work ethics as the MEC for Education. Recently, we also lost a former member of this House and Premier, an activist, uh, Ms. Frances um, Beatrice Mashov, as a Premier and throughout her professional career, an activist and leader was an embodiment of a true servant of the people. Lastly, we also remember Frini Jinwala, founding speaker of our Democratic Parliament of South Africa, who passed away on the 12th of January, 2023. In his tribute to Dr. Jinwala, President Cyril Ramaphosa said, and I quote, Frini Jinwala epitomized the ethos and expectations of our then fledging constitution and played an important role in building the capacity of parliament through transformation of activists and leaders into lawmakers and who were in turn able to transform our country, close quote. We remain proud of this good legacy left by Dr. Jinwala. May the souls of the departed rest in eternal peace. Honorable members, the presentation of this budget comes at a time when the country is still battling with the effects of gender-based violence and femicide, which continue to haunt us. As part of our advocacy campaigns, we call for strong legal action to be taken against the perpetrators of gender-based violence. Despite the observable or perceived leniency of the law in matters of this tenure before the courts, this should serve as a true lesson in many abusers that gender-based violence is not an option. Our participation within the established sector forums, such as the Speaker's Forum, Secretary's Association of South Africa, Commonwealth Parliament Association South Africa branch, as mechanisms for all cooperative governance is critical. Within the platform of Speaker's Forum, we continue to seek solutions to the legislative sector budget challenges within complex fiscal environment. Working together with our presiding officers, portfolio and ad hoc committee chairpersons or our whips, members of committees and highly competent staff component, we continue to raise the torch for many South Africans. Honorable members, chapter nine of the National Development Plan, NDP Vision 2030, articulates mechanisms for South Africa's quest in developing a capable developmental state. The NDP focuses on sustainable economic growth and development within the context of thriving constitutional democracy. It recognizes the importance of all branches of the state working together within cooperative governance framework to deliver on this country's vision. Within this framework, a strong independent South African legislative sector is vital to success. Deputy Speaker, a, philo a philosophical account of an egalitarian society, it is a society where all people are considered equal regardless of gender, race, religion, or age. There is no class system in an egalitarian society, but rel relatively equal success to income and wealth. This vote depicts our efforts of continuously seeking to improve our systems to influence outcomes in order to change the lives of our people for the better. We consider institutional leadership critical in driving and shaping policy directives, developing contingency plans, impact analysis, and the growing risk amid budget constraints. Essentially, we have classified our institutional programs to remain within the policy regime of government and the sector and to maintain a good, a good legacy of our democratic breakthrough. Honorable members, it remains a singular honor for me to be able to present the budget vote 
for the Free State Legislature in this August House. On constitutional mandate, the Free State Legislature derives its mandate from the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa of 1996. The Constitution confers on the Legislature the power to pass for the Free State Province laws for the Free State Province to the extent indicated in the Constitution in Schedule 4 and 5, read with Section 104 and Section 1141 of the Constitution. The Constitution also confers upon the Free State Legislature the power to conduct oversight over the Provincial Executive Council and other provincial organs of the state in terms of Section 1142 of the Constitution. To give effect to oversight and lawmaking, the Legislature is required by Section 118 of the Constitution to facilitate public involvement in legislative and other processes of the Legislature. On the 20th of April, 1964, Dr. Nelson Mandela delivered a speech during the treason trial in which he responded to the accusations by the apartheid government that the South African struggle was influenced by, by foreigners and, com and communists. He said, I admire the British and American democratic systems. I admire the doctrine of separation of powers as well as the independence of its judiciary, the Magna Carta, the Petition of Rights and the Bill of Rights never fail to arouse my admiration. It is these ideals firmly engraved in our Constitution that we seek to protect and defend. The role of the three arms of the state, namely one, parliament, two, executive, and three, judiciary, must be respected and safeguarded. Therefore, there cannot be any justification of continue to continue having certain powers and authority concentrated in a single arm of the state. Each arm must be supported and allowed independently to execute its constitutional obligations without fragmentation of mandates. Parliament makes laws and the executive executes the laws. The judiciary interprets the law. We'll continue to maintain oversight over the executive in terms of section 114 of the Constitution. We, are, we, however, remain concerned that our core mandate of lawmaking, public participation and oversight, continue to be impeded, as earlier said, by budget constraints. While our members must be commended for the sterling work they continue to do through portfolio committees and other established mechanisms, the continuously decreasing baseline is a, a serious concern. On program one, institutional leadership, we have started 2022-2023 financial year with a deeper focus on comprehensive analysis of our spending versus outcomes. We looked at the degree for which our plans are intertwined with the needs of the people. This vote depicts our efforts of continuously seeking to improve our systems to influence these outcomes. We consider institutional leadership critical in driving and shaping policy directives, de developing contingency plans. The sectoral engagements we embark on as the legislature also ensure that we interact with different sectors and stakeholders in our province. These platforms play a critical role in giving our people the opportunity to suggest solutions to take the institution forward. In this way, we eliminate social distance between the legislature, government, and the people. This is in line with our operating procedure to involve government as members of executive in addressing matters of public importance. We strive to develop plans that have visible impact in the work of the legislature to the citizens of this province and our stakeholders. We have undertaken a review of our annual performance and aligned our strategic document as per recommendations of the Auditor General. We cited strong financial management and performance information as critical to the functioning of the legislature. We dedicate consider considerable time to development and review of organizational policies most of them are now at the final stage of consultation processes. The report from the bargaining management team is due for submission to the accounting officer. We continue to strengthen our administrative capacity by focused recruitment 
when new vacancies arise. Recently, approval has been granted for advertising of 800 vacant posts. They include that of the Hansard editor, the deputy secretary, admin assistant, procurement officer, senior asset officer, constituency liaison officer, chief audit executive, admin assistant, institutional support services, and we have also earmarked six vacant unfunded posts, which we are unable to fill because of the financial constraints. Honorable members, our commitment to clean governance is undisputed and clean audit remains our goal. The legislature received an unqualified audit opinion for period of 2021-2022 financial year. In the main, the Auditor General insisted that the legislature need to improve on consequence management to achieve clean audit status. We have since managed to reduce our irregular transaction with 50% arising from 2021-2022 financial year to 43% for the financial year 2022-2023 financial year. A clear post-audit action plan addressing matters raised by the Auditor General has yielded positive results with the improvement in financial statements and performance information, and we intend to continue implementing that plan. Our governance structures, such as the Audit Committee, is functional and monitors progress on administration very closely. Furthermore, our Budget and Oversight Committee continues to play a pivotal role oversight uh, over the financial administration. Honorable members, on organizational development environment, Deputy Speaker, the Free State Legislature currently has 194 approved posts, that is in the organogram, on its, uh, uh, and has 158 posts filled, 139 permanent employees, 13 contract employees linked to the term of office of the Office of the Speaker and the contract employees with equates to 81%. For this financial year, the institution absorbed for individuals on an internship program with the purpose of giving them exposure and vital work experience. We are in the process of conducting an overhaul review of the organizational structure to determine how the organization needs to improve and best conducted in line with annual business and workforce planning processes or in response to key events such as changes in technology, uh, processes and priorities. The review will also investigate the grading system and disparities which exist in the institution. On capacity building, training and development. Honorable members, it is through education that we can help build a sustainable, sustainable livelihoods and eliminate dependency welfare across all levels of society. To achieve this feat, we learn from one of the leading philosophers of the 20th century, Paolo Riglas Nives Freire, when he wrote that, I quote, for apart from inquiry, apart from praxis, individuals cannot be truly human, knowledge emerges only through invention and reinvention, through the restless, impatient, continuing, hopeful inquiry human beings pursue in the world, with the world and with each other. True generosity consists precisely in fighting to destroy the causes which nourish false charity. Close quote. In addition to the internal work skills plan, the legislature is part of the capacity uh, the legislature is part of the capacity building program initiated by the legislative sector support. The purpose of the LLS program is to strengthen the skills and knowledge of not only members, but that is MPLs, but also the staff across all levels. The Free State Legislature identified and helped nine, man and helped nine management officials to register in a one-year advanced certificate in governance leadership program offered by the University of Vedvatersrand NQF Level 7. The overall purpose 
of the program is to enhance the performance of legislators to execute the constitutional responsibilities through a professional development program anchored in the core functions of the legislature. Our financial aid program is bearing fruit as our, as our officials are increasingly taking advantage of this benefit. Through hard work and commitment, more managed to achieve their higher qualifications in recent years. Currently, 15 of our staff members are furthering studies and 90% of those are postgraduate qualifications and six officials completed their qualifications for 2022-2023 financial year. Through our financial aid program, the legislature has been able to produce PhD, master's degree, postgraduate diplomas, degree, uh, degrees and certificate holders for various from various universities. We wish to congratulate all our employees who formed graduate during this graduation season. <clears throat> On public procurement to support local municipal communities, the revised preferential procurement regulations framework are now in place, following a declaration of invalidity by the court in 2021. However, this does not negatively impact on our commitment to competitive, fair, transparent, equitable, and cost-effective public procurement. Through these principles, previously disadvantaged groups such as blacks, women, and people with disability are enrolled in the mainstream economy. We continue to support local economic development by encouraging and support suppliers in rural areas of our province to take advantage of economic opportunities arising from the people-centered supply chain processes. On program two, the core business. Honorable members, the slow process in finalizing and adopting the legislative sector bill within the sector is hampering the harmonization of administrative functions envisaged by the sector in attainment of uniform approach to practices, processes and procedure in the sector. When we helped in developing the bill and further as signatories to a memorandum of understanding, we supported the regulatory pro progress. Firstly, assuring the power of legislators in determining their own budget process. And secondly, the promotion of separation of powers as envisaged by the father of our democracy, Dr. Nelson Mandela, 59 years ago. We need to appreciate the importance of the framework and implement it through adoption of annual committee programs. These programs extend the existing arrangements beyond consideration of reports, oversight visits, and public hearings on proposed legislation before committees. This we do to realize the provisions of section 118 of the Constitution that caused the legislature to facilitate public involvement. On legislation and oversight, to ensure that the constitutional mandate is achieved, our work is guided by the sector oversight model. SOM is a framework by which the oversight is informed by performance evaluation and budget analysis. All, all portfolio committees, which are constituted by proportional representatives of the parties in the legislature, have generic powers and functions, and they include inter alia to monitor and oversee the work of departments and provincial entities to consider bills referred to by the House or the Speaker, conduct oversight visits to government projects, and provide recommendations. The portfolio committees have the power to summon any person to appear before them, give evidence, or produce documents. They may require any person or the institution to report to them. On lawmaking, honorable members, during the last financial year, we made a commitment to give urgent attention to the process of review of the rules and orders of the legislature. We are pleased to report to this House that a comprehensive review of the rules and orders of the legislature was conducted and concluded in June 2022. The Speaker has also framed the rule as required in order to respond to gaps identified during the application. Following the adoption of these rules, we are guaranteed a smooth running of the House and its committees 
until the sector attains its uniformity. Honorable Deputy Speaker, our regular meetings with our public protector continue to sharpen our cooperation and collaboration as encapsulated in the Memorandum of Understanding. Our recent meeting addressed, among other issues, implementation of remedial action recommended by the public protector, petitions, all other matters of concurrent oversight competence. We, remain, we maintain this relationship with other Chapter 9 and 10 institutions and with stakeholders such as the House of Traditional Leaders and Civil Society Organizations working together with Commission for Gender Equality and, other Af and the African Women in Leadership Network, we will host an event to celebrate the life of Ms. Frini Chinwala, the first speaker of our democratic parliament. We'll continue to work with all organizations that support democracy in order to ensure that we champion democracy as envisaged in our vision. We must work together to build a society based on the principles of Ubuntu, respect and dignity for all. We'll continue to work with different stakeholders, chapter nine and 10 institutions as mentioned, traditional leaders, faith-based organizations, youth formations, community-based organizations to shape the future of our province. We will also continue to educate our people through our public participation and education programs for the people to know their rights and responsibilities. On public participation and education, in terms of the sector oversight model, a unit responsible for public participation in a legislature should play a key role in assisting with the coordination and liaison with civil society groups. During the period under review, the Office of the Speaker, with the help of the Public Participation Unit, successfully hosted the following activities across the province. The Workers' Parliament, the Youth Parliament, the Gender-Based Violence Summit, the Heritage Day celebrations, Disability Parliament. A multi-stakeholder team has been established to prepare reports of all activities and to track progress on implementation. These activities remain import an important mechanism to eliminate social distance between the state and our communities. However, public participation is imp imp impeded once more by inadequate, inadequate budget to the legislature. We are at the level of Speakers Forum working to address anomaly to ensure greater consultation before annual allocations to the legislature are finalized. On the maintenance of the fourth RATSA, the Deputy Speaker, the conditions of the fourth RATSA building have deteriorated to an unprecedented level due to neglect. An amount of 2.5 million rand was allocated towards maintenance of the fourth RATSA by the Provincial Treasury during 2022-2023 financial year. We are not happy regarding the progress towards the maintenance of this building. On modernization and refurbishment of the fourth Ratsal chamber, the modernization process of the fourth Ratsal has been reactivated with the installation of electronic sound system commencing this week, and it is expected to be completed in the first week of July 2023. The process of refurbishment of the furniture is also ongoing. All this work shall restore the fourth Ratsal as an esteemed plenary facility, a magnificent and magnificent heritage and tourism attraction site. On program, program three, international relations. Deputy Speaker, this program has not yet been incorporated in the appropriation bill as a separate program. Therefore, its activities will continue to be funded under program one administration until the decision of the legislative sector to effect separate funding for this program is approved and gazetted by Treasury. We wish to report under international work that the Constitution of Commonwealth Parliamentary Association Free State Sub-Branch was adopted by the House during 2022 and that CPA Sub-Branch has also been launched in 2022. The CPA Constitution provides 
Among other issues, clarity on roles, rights, and responsibilities of current members of the legislature, members of the executive and the associate members, and, and also their participation at all levels. These levels include Commonwealth Women Parliament, CWP, which is also due to be launched upon election of the steering committee members of the CWP. We consider a launch for a CWP to be long overdue and therefore the finalization of this outstanding matter is critical in operationalizing the CPA matters in full. On members and political parties support, section 1162 of the constitution requires that we provide administrative and financial support to members of political parties. In addition, the Political Party Funding Act, Act number no. 6 of 2018, was operationalized in 2018 to regulate public and private funding of political parties. For the purpose of this support, we use budget program 2 called Facilities for Members and the Political Parties. While funding elections to political parties represented in the legislature came to an end, the Act still provides for members to receive extensive support to enable parties and members to perform work within their political party structures. Whilst the announcement to the House at the previous budget political tabling that financial assistance towards political parties have increased substantially due to the introduction of Political Party Funding Act, we warned of unintended consequences. As a result, the increase has proven to be unsustainable as there is a recorded shortfall over the MTF period. Political parties have a vast range of areas which they must cover as constituency, research, offices, and support, such as constituency, research, offices, and support staff. It is expected that parties will be more responsive in their constituency work to conduct oversight over the legislature by giving the necessary audience to their constituencies. This should also be in line with Rule 36 of the Standing Rules and Orders of the Legislature in terms of submission of constituency reports. Tabling of constituency reports in the House is one of the many mechanisms we employ to hold the executive accountable individually and collectively. We will henceforth admire, administer the process um, governing constituency report to ensure that they table before the House as required. Honorable members, on appropriation, the budget for vote two to be appropriated amounts to 260 million and 59,000 rands, with a further statutory amount of 27 million and 76,000 rands. The total budget allocation, therefore, amounts to 287 million and 135,000 rands. This constitutes a 4.8 decrease compared to the previous financial year's allocation. We appreciate the support from the provincial treasury in ensuring that additional program of international relations introduced by the sector will be reflected in vote two of the legislature in the appropriation bill. Therefore, our budget structure will soon reflect all four programs and not only three programs as it is the case right now. The allocated funding per program is as follows. On program one, administration, we have, allo we have allocated an amount of 161,983,000 rands. The budget caters for the office of the speaker, including the budget allocations to portfolio committees, office of the secretary to the legislature, and finance division. On program two, facilities and benefits for members and political parties, we allocated an amount of 51,419,000 rand. On program three, parliamentary services, we have allocated 46 million 
657,000 rand. The purpose of this program is to ensure that the core procedural services, such as handset, legislation and oversight, and legal services are catered for. On direct change, on direct charge, members' remuneration is budgeted at 27 million and 76,000 rands. This allocation is aligned with the recommendations by the Commission on Remuneration of Public Office Bearers. In executing this budget, we want to imp impress on the constitutional mandate vested with the legislature and the fact that we require a well-resourced budget to carry out these mandates of oversight, public participatory and lawmaking. The practice where the executive historically assisted in funding the legislature events such as budget votes and state of the province address have ceased. This was done to fulfill the constitutional responsibilities of the legislature in terms of the lawmaking process and public participation. The legislature is now solely responsible for these costs. However, the budget allocation did not provide for these additional costs. Pursuant to the legislative requirements, that consultation must take place between the Speaker and the MEC for Treasury regarding the allocation to the legislature. The allocations remain unsatisfactory. During the engagements between the Premier, MEC for Treasury, and the Speaker in 2022, an undertaking was made to discuss the budget of the legislature. The purpose of these engagements was to address the underfunding in the adjustment. We are looking forward to those engagements still. In conclusion, Deputy Speaker, let me thank all presiding officers and members of the legislature for their commitment and dedication to the work of the legislature and its committees. In this environment, your nights are shorter and your, day, your days are desecrated. You are governed by penitential thoughts away from your families. Still, you bear a thankless work, and at any measure, your adversaries are always lurking. By, by standing with our people, you have held the fort as it was explicated by Noam Chomsky. Changes and progress very rarely are gifts from above. They come out of the struggles from below. I also want to thank the staff of the legislature, under the leadership of Mr. Machaka, for the sterling work they do in supporting the members and ensuring that they make the work easy for them and ensure that all the programs are a success. I also want to thank members of the executive for your continued attendance to the plenaries of this House and committees of the legislature when called upon to do so. Thank you to the Secretary of the Legislature once more. And thank you all for your attention. I thank you, Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. The address by the Honorable Speaker concludes the presentation of vote to Free State Legislature. I thank you. Honourable members, let us continue. We proceed to motion. We proceed to motion two. The secretary shall read the motion. That the second reading debate on the appropriation bill number two of 2023 be continued with vote four, Free State Provincial Treasury. The vote before the House is vote four. Free State Provincial Treasury, the Honorable MEC Khadija Brown, you may address the House. Honorable Speaker Mezanile Sufuba, Deputy Speaker Malusi Mapena, the Honorable Premier Ndati Mtolisi Dukwana, Members of the Executive Council, 
members of the Free State Provincial Legislature, mayors and executive mayors present, the leadership of the African National Congress. We have representatives of national leadership, provincial and leadership in the House, as well as our opposition parties. The Director General of the Free State Province, heads of departments, all stakeholders, esteemed guests, ladies and gentlemen, do Honorable Speaker, I would like to present this budget during the month in which we will be celebrating the birth of a great leader of our liberation movement, Comrade Walter Sisulu, the co-founder of the ANC Youth League and Nkonto Wisizwe, who was born on the 18th of May 1912. 111 years ago. We would also like to join those across the province who will be celebrating their 100th year birthdays and just under, as they were witness to, and those who have lived lives and still have memories of the United Party winning the general elections in South Africa 85 years ago, in the same month on the 18th of May 1938. Ten years later, 75 years ago, in 1948, May 26, the National Party won the whites-only election in South Africa and began to institute the policy of apartheid. In 1956, May the 18th, the Separate Representat Representation of Voters Amendment Act one of the cornerstones of legislations during the apartheid era commenced. In 1994, on the 1st of May, May Day or Workers' Day, has been officially celebrated in South Africa since the 1980s. However, May the 1st only became an official recognized public holiday after the democratic elections of 1994. In 1994, on the 10th of May, the inauguration of Nelson Mandela as president after the first free and fair elections in South Africa. And it is on the 23rd of May, South Africa in 1994 as well, joined the Organization of African Unity, AOAU, and it was on the 5th of May in 2020, not so long ago, that our nation received the first guidelines for quarantine and isolation during the great global pandemic that hit this globe. So whilst as many in our province have lived and witnessed a hundred months of May, they would be able to tell us the tale of our country's milestones and the dramatic changes in a century's history. However, the challenges over the many, many years of our liberation movement, this province and provincial treasury, we remain steadfast. Steadfast despite the tough economic environment which we are operating in. The rising inflation, we remain steadfast, Honorable Deputy Speaker, despite the environmental changes often caused by human influences and natural ecological processes. We remain steadfast as we see these env environmental changes affect many across the world, facing the effects of all of these natural disasters. We remain resolute as part of the human race as we have witnessed earthquakes, which has impacted most of Turkey, bringing it close to home, the floods in KZN and other parts of our country. We re remain steadfast as we conti continue to deal with the aftermath of the disaster in Yahersfontein. Our domestic economy remains steadfast as we face the consequences of the looming intensified conflicts, which we are witnessing in Russia and Ukraine, as well as the conflict on the continent in Sudan, and the recent disaster in Rwanda. We will remain steadfast and resolute on our path towards change. We will forge towards a national democratic revolution espoused in our Freedom Charter and Constitution, we will continue to work together towards building a nation that is united, democratic, non-sexist, non-racial, and a prosperous South Africa. Honorable Speaker, we will remain steadfast, as it is our decisions today that will absolutely impact a child from Bronville as he or she lives through the next hundred years in this country and on this beautiful continent. 
Given the above context, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the Free State Provincial Treasury's vision is to be innovative and resilient partner in prudent fiscal management, social economic, socioeconomic growth, and service delivery. The Department's vision is to promote socioeconomic inclusiveness for shared growth through innovation, fiscal management, sustainable resource management, and good governance. Honorable Speaker, on the occasion of the State of the Nation Address, the, pro the, the Premier had outlined that the period ahead will be characterized by courage and decisive action to set the free state on a new path of development. In this spirit, I would like to present this budget vote as our commitment to support the province in this noble endeavor. Whilst Treasury does not render services directly to the public, we serve the people of the free state through our support to departments and local governments, our municipalities, our entities, our monitoring and oversight to ensure sound financial management at provincial and local government level. Our role on governance, clean orders, efficiencies represent value for money and financial oversight is a direct influence and impact on service delivery. To fulfill this role, an amount of 351,852,000 has been appropriated to the Provincial Treasury for the 2023-24 financial year. Shortly, I'll outline Program 1, Administration. Honourable Deputy Speaker, the program is critical to ensuring the effective functioning of the department. The program ensures that the appropriate appropriate support services are provided to all programs. Given the nature of Treasury's work, the bulk of our budget of 118.879 million is allocated to this program. On human capital, capacity and building, ethics and consequence management, this program will play a key role in ensuring that we will fill vacancies, critical vacancies and improve our employment rate to at least 90%. We will also make a concerted effort to improve on the representation of women in senior management positions, currently at 39% to at least 40% as we pursue the national target of 50%. The department will embark on skills audit to ensure that we will not only have the capacity to fulfill our mandate and responsibilities, but that we are positioned to deal with the challenges of the future. At the same time, the emphasis will be greater on ethics through training on the code of conduct and awareness sessions on security measures, ethics and anti-corruption. The department will embark on a con and conduct a lifestyle audit for the entire department. I've requested that during the first phase of the department's lifestyle audit, the process should start with the MEC, and that's me. Honourable Speaker, I'm happy to report that we have sharpened our controls and Provincial Treasury improved our audit outcomes to an unqualified with no findings, a clean audit opinion for 2021 and 22. And we'll do everything in our power to maintain it. Congratulations, Team's Treasury. On innovation, the Department aims to reduce the utilisation of manual paper-based process for efficiencies and cost savings, and we'll start with the implementation of an electronic document register that will be deployed across the department. On special programs, Honourable Deputy Speaker, my office will continue with the program to empower citizens on financial literacy, which will help our future generation to understand how to manage their hands and cents and to empower them to make smart savings, borrowings, and other financial decisions, such as stock files, and the scourge of cash loans, risks in terms of managing those borrowings, financial plans, wills, internet scams, and WhatsApp scams. On our support to local economy, I'm very proud to say that this department has been able to maintain its record of paying 100% of uncontested invoices from suppliers within 30 days, and it intends to continue to main, maintain that in the 2023-24 financial year. On Program 2, Honourable Deputy Speaker, Sustainable and Resource Management. In this, in this unit, Honourable Deputy Speaker, the role is to provide professional advice and support to the provincial economic analysis, fiscal policy and implementation of the provincial budget. 
In the 23-24 financial year, this program is allocated an amount of 57.816 million. On economic analysis, to draw the attention of policymakers, stakeholders, pertinent fiscal and labor markets, socioeconomic and macroeconomic issues, we continue to deal with um, our four, fourth quarterly labor market review documents, which will provide insightful analysis of the provincial labor market performance and the latest labor statistics released by Stats SA. And our three annual pub publications, namely the medium term policy budget statements, the provincial economic review outlook, municipal and district economic review and outlook. And these documents are to support the provincial exco as well as local government in determining their planning and budgeting. I'm pleased to appraise the distinguished house that will continue to produce these quarterly and the annual publications during each financial year. Honorable Speaker, our research colloquium has become an institution in the province and I'm happy to report that we were able to host the fifth annual Free State Research Colloquium with a theme called Transitioning the Provincial Economy Through an in Economic Growth and Competitive Recovery from the 28th to the 29th of September 2022. We continue to take great pride in promoting synergetic partnerships with other departments, academic institutions in the province and the success of the research colloquium was because of the collaborative efforts which included partners such as the Office of the Premier, Destia and the management of the Central University of Technology and the University of the Free State. The success in the last colloquium highlighted the fact that it attracted 17 high quality research presentations from seasoned researchers and top ranking academics across South Africa. To equip our policy makers in the in-depth knowledge of valuable holistic information, we would like to cultivate research-driven policy making. To build on the success, Honorable Speaker, we plan to host the sixth provincial research colloquium this year, and we intend to share the relevant findings and policy implications in available provincial and national platforms, such as workshops, conferences, and meetings. And part of delivering the vision that our Honourable Premier has set out for this province, we propose the following topics of our research colloquium for this year. Number one, the assessment of our logistics network in the free state to support production to market, which will include assessments from airports company South Africa, Transnet, uh, Road, as well as logistics to our SEZ and the international, uh, the industrial parks within our province. Number two, the assessment of total energy needs over the medium term expenditure framework. And number three, the assessment of the total water needs over the medium term expenditure framework. And the intention will be to complete a holistic budget over a five year period as we implement energy and water um, safety across the province and it enhances our plan towards realizing the National Development Plan 2020, 2030 vision as well as the Free State Growth and Development Strategy. On budget management, we have found great achievements and we believe that Provincial Treasury in preparation of this annual Provincial Budget, specifically during this constrained economic environment and our financial constraints, we found that it was absolutely one of our greatest achievements as the department over this 2022, 23, 23, 24 financial year. We will continue to drive the provincial budget process and ensure that these decisions are evidence-based and informed by this research analysis. On provincial own revenue, Honorable Deputy Speaker, we embrace the manner in which we and, and the rest of our departments have performed over the years in terms of sources of revenue to fund priorities of government. The province has been able to achieve a target that was set for own revenue. In fact, Honorable Deputy Speaker, our own revenue target was increased as provincial treasury during the revenue adjustment budget, whereby an additional 121.814 million was achieved and made available for the province. To emphasize the significance of this revenue, 
Provincial Treasury has funded own revenue initiatives under the departments of public works and infrastructure as well as community safety, roads and transport. And these funding, well, the funding will be utilized for refurbishment of properties for rental purposes and security upgrades at various registration authorities. On public finance, Treasury will continue to monitor the spending in line with limited financial resources and it will be channeled, channeled towards key government priorities. At least 5 billion of our conditional grants and on provincial infrastructure and our role as provincial Treasury to get, together with national Treasury is that there is value for money for infrastructure delivered. One of our main concerns is the slow expenditure trends on conditional grants year on year. We are committed in ensuring that the planned projects will be fast-tracked and completed within available budgets and timelines. Working together with the National Treasury, we will continue to support efforts to institutionalize the Infrastructure Development Management System, IDMS, within departments in encouraging better planning and service delivery of infrastructure. Honourable Deputy Speaker, I'm pleased to announce that the Provincial Revenue Fund has obtained a clean audit report during the 21-22 financial year. And the province will work harder to ensure that we enhance our liquidity and build much required reserves. Program 3, Assets and Ability Management. This program provides policy direction in facilitating the effective and efficient management of assets liabilities and financial management systems and procure transversal and cross-cutting goods and services. The program has been allocated 64.478 million. Honorable Speaker, there has been some improvements on audit findings across provincial departments relating to non-compliance with supply chain management prescripts. It remains a major concern. We will therefore continue with our monitoring and oversight of supply chain management and asset management in terms of movable and immovable assets within departments and entities. Probity assessments are one of the interventions through which the department supports other departments and entities to conduct this oversight role. To support departments and entities with the implementation of the preferential procurement regulations of 2022, following its promulgation in November 22, the department issued a circular to provide guidance and conducted sessions with stakeholders and head of departments, chief financial officers, SEM practitioners, suppliers such as CIDB workshops for women in construction, and provincial treasury furthermore assisted departments to ensure that they, their procurement policies are aligned with the necessary regulations. The department remains committed to supporting suppliers, honorable deputy speaker in this province, and we will conduct SEM roadshows across the province and service providers on these new regulations. This will be done in conjunction with CIDB, CEDA, SARS, DESTIA, and will provide information on completion of bids, factors to consider when comply, complying with bid prices, compliance matters, CSD on-site registration, tax compliance statuses, and availability of construction and other programs within government. On financial government, governance, Program 4, Honourable Deputy Speaker, the role of this program is to reflect on the financial activities of the province as well as compliance with financial norms and standards. The program is allocated 30.011 million. And in terms of accounting services, Honourable Deputy Speaker, within the sixth administration, as we took office, the audit outcomes of the provincial departments were not promising. Today we can report that the audit outcomes steadily improved from the 2018-2019 financial year. However, we are still not satisfied with the overall status. We are committed to work harder and improve it in, uh, much further. In the previous financial year, we reported that during the 17-18 financial year, the province had one entity with adverse opinion and three entities with disclaimed audit opinions and no clean audits, Honourable Deputy Speaker. Today and now, we have four clean audits within the Free State Province. Provincial Treasury and COCTA improve from unqualified with findings, of audit opinions, to clean audit opinions in the last financial year. 
This is significant for us as a province as they both responsible for oversight and monitoring of other departments, entities and municipalities. Fleet management and housing fund retain their clean audits. We have also seen a great improvement by the Department of Social Development and the Free State Gambling, Liquor and Tourism Authority. Both improved from qualified with no finding audit opinions to unqualified with findings audit opinion. We are also encouraged by the improvement in the number of audit findings across the departments and entities. So in the following areas and the most improved is procurement management across departments, 55 percent reduction in findings, strategic planning and performance management, 42 percent reduction in findings, and revenue management, 33 re percent reduction in findings. Honorable Speaker, poor financial management, a culture of non-compliance, and a lack of consequence management, as the Premier had stated, will no longer be tolerated in this province. And you can see the common thread across all the budget votes that you've heard over the past month. Good financial governance is necessary to ensure that public funds and financial assets and liabilities are managed transparently, accountably, and with integrity in the interest of government's goals and objectives. We will therefore include in our monitoring and oversight various other documents, and they are preparation of consolidated annual financial statements, assessment of interim and draft annual financial statements, and this is what Treasury does to help each department and its entities, assessment of monthly and quarterly key performance indicators relating to PFMA compliance, assessment of remedial action plans from the department and entities, and this includes the audit action plans that are outlined through the AG reports, assessments of the implementation by departments and entities on the resolutions emanating from PROPAC as we report to this parliamentary committee and to this parliament, assessments of requests for condonement of irregular expenditure for departments and entities, and of course briefing of PROPAC and audit out outcomes and the unauthorized expenditure for the province. To conclude and improve our monitoring and oversight, we will continue to develop a rollout an electronic tool for monthly reporting and remedial audit action plans. On risk management and internal audit, both structures, governance structures for all departments and entities cannot be overemphasized. Honorable Deputy Speakers, these include the risk management and internal units as committees, which plays a critical role in ensuring effective, efficient, and economical use of our state resources. Honorable Deputy Speaker, with this said, all of our risk and audit um, structures are in place as a province. On fraud and risk and ethics management, in 2022, we continued with the International Anti-Fraud Awareness Week. And this was held in partnership with the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners, NetBank, the Institution of Commercial Forensic Practitioners, the Special Investigating Unit. And it's important in terms of these events where all departments are educated, they derive some meaningful and purposeful information with reference to the provincial implementation on fraud prevention and anti-corruption strategies, and they promote provincial ethics and professional ethics and management within our province. On the national anti-corruption strategy and our lifestyle audits, ethic management strategies, and on the implementation of lessons learned through this program, we found that it has benefited our province tremendously. Provincial Treasury's March 23 assessment on the implementation, together with the Office of the Premier on anti-fraud and corruption strategies and ethics management, saw a notable improvement in September 2022. Honorable Deputy Speaker, our continued endeavors in maximizing the performance in internal audit activities include workshops to capacitate auditors and business processes within the supply chain and financial management process, as well as, as relevant instruction notes issued by treasuries across the provinces. We do this in partnership with National Treasury to pilot a project introducing a toolkit to CEOs, CFOs of entities as well as accounting offices across the province. To support our audit committees and strengthen them, we've got a provincial audit committee forum. The Premier, MECs, HODs, CFOs, 
attends these forums, and the Auditor General, as well as the Institute of Internal Auditors, Central University of Technology, were among some of the speakers. On program five, which is municipal finance management, and this is a critical role for which we've expanded as Treasury, this program is to, mo to promote and improve the state of financial governance and management of our local government. The program has been allocated and has been um, introduced and increased to 80.668 million. Accounting services and asset management within MFM, the, these improvements in the recent audit results have shown some of the work that we have put in, specifically to the ones in local municipalities such as Motaka and Setsoto, which have improved to unqualified audit opinions over the last financial year. However, we cannot be oblivious to the challenges that we still confront at a local government level, and hence the further investment. We are heeding Honorable Premier's call to upscale our oversight and monitoring, together with COCTA, to ensure that appropriation action is accelerated. The incremental improvement of these audit outcomes needs to be consistent and sustained across many more of these municipalities. Honourable Deputy Speaker, we are equally urging our mayors and councils to collaborate with us in monitoring the audit process, as well as to ensure that financial statements are submitted on time as per required of the Section 126 of the Municipal Finance Management Act. Madam Speaker, it is our quest to impact positively on the financial health of municipalities, and thus far we have deployed financial skills in Kopanong local municipality to insist with the improvement of the municipality's financial management environment and outstanding financial statements. Moreover, additional support will be provided through regular engagements with municipalities embedded on key principles to financial management with a view to enhance control processes and ultimately improve audit outcomes. Not only do would we review the draft annual financial statements through the long and medium term, which entails the provision of technical guidance and direction of these annual financial statements, we ensure that they are GRAP and MFA, MA compliant. In year monitoring, Honourable Deputy Speaker, we've seen an increase of the number of funded budgets to eight municipalities to the 2022-23 financial year relative to the four in the previous financial year. As part of our endeavour to reduce the number of unfunded budgets, this unit will amplify its assistance to 22 delegated municipalities in an effort to strengthen their financial position going forward. Treasuries will further continue to monitor and improve the in-year monitoring reports like we do with provincial departments, we will do it at municipal level as well, and these in-year monitoring, um, monitoring reports have been enhanced to include 13 sustainable indicators to identify municipalities that are experiencing financial challenges, and that would allow us to proactively intervene timelessly. Revenue and debt remains a challenge across municipalities, Honourable Deputy Speaker, and with this program, the purpose of providing this technical support to selected municipalities, it is to assist them in improving revenue and debt management processes and controls. It will include, amongst others, facilitating intergovernmental relationships, and we will also ensure that on debt and revenue-related matters, we would, as National Treasury and Provincial Treasury, continue to negotiate between our municipalities and other departments within provincial, national and local government to increase payments for local services. We also support municipalities in monitoring indigent registers and we also would like to ensure that support is offered on training to municipal officials on how to implement revenue-related policies. On risk management and internal audit, this unit is assisting all 22 municipalities to, to create a risk management and internal audit unit. We have to ensure that the committees are sitting. We also present difficulties as municipalities have not been able to recruit chief risk officers, risk practitioners, chief audit executives and in internal audits. And that has affected the effectiveness and functionality of both um, activities negatively. Thus, the support to these municipalities. We implore our municipalities to prioritize and protect these crucial positions 
and as we deal with the internal audit committees, through some of them, they're not currently operational as a result of lack of appointment of independent chairpersons within risk and audit management and the inability of senior management to attend and participate these committee meetings. Honorable Deputy Speaker, for the objective of empowering and exchanging best practices with municipal officials, Treasury will continue to organize and host annual forums as well as district forums. Together with the Premier's Coordinating Forum, PCF, we will ensure that risk management and internal audit committee will also participate in induction workshops led by Provincial Treasury. On the critical supply chain management, in order to reduce unwanted expenditure and enhance local government service delivery, Provincial Treasury will keep reviewing SCM and provincial procurement policies to ensure that all municipalities are compliant with SCM regulations in terms of the area of expertise and the available skills. The transfer of these skills through formal workshops and on-the-job training showed a successful conclusion of a program with National Treasury, TETA, where we train 54 municipal SCM practitioners across the province. It has concluded, and just this week, we had uh, conferred the final certification at NQI, NQF5 level for those supply chain practitioners. Congratulations to all of you. And as you go out to your municipalities, we would like... Thank you. We would like to ensure that you keep an eye on the execution of your role and reduce that irregular expenditure across the board. On financial recovery services, this unit plays an indispensable role in providing essential support to financially distressed municipalities. The, the municipality is placed under mandatory intervention on Mangaun Metro, Tokoloho, Mafube local municipalities. Additionally, Pumelela and Ketwana have also been voluntary financial, in voluntary financial recovery plans, but they're being supported with monitoring and evaluation with these plans by both Treasury and COCTA. The MFRS unit helps municipalities to navigate and deal with the financial ch challenges and long-term successes in order to be able to deal with some of these matters on their own. Honourable De Deputy Speaker, as I conclude, in our efforts to support departments, entities and municipalities, we will work closely with our sister department, COCTA, and stakeholders such as SALGA and AGSA and others within the local government space. We will do our best to assist departments, entities and municipalities to improve their financial management practices and ultimately their audit outcomes. It remains the responsibility of those tasked with leading these institutions to take accountability and to ensure that good governance practices are embedded into the operations of their institutions. Honorable Deputy Speaker, next Sunday we will be hosting and celebrating Mother's Day. Please allow me to acknowledge all mothers and the role that they play in shaping us as people and citizens of our beloved province. When I talk about mothers, I refer to every woman who raised or raises a child, whether it is her, her biological offspring or not. And to those single dads, you may celebrate Mother's Day and Father's Day. Honorable Speaker, like any mother would, do everything in her power to give their children a better future. It is incumbent upon us to create a better future for all. We cannot rest while poverty, unemployment, and equality remains. As Provincial Treasury, we are committed to ensure that financial resources of the province are used effectively and efficiently to service our people and bring about socio-economic transformation to change the lives for the better. Honourable Speaker, at this point I must extend my deepest appreciation to our various public and private sector partners for their con continued support to the work of Provincial Treasury, the Free State Provincial Government, and the support that we receive through their various corporate governance and social rep responsibility programs. And as we conclude this vote, Honourable Speaker and Deputy Speaker and this House, allow me to acknowledge and deeply appreciate the support of the lead of our executive, our Honourable Premier. 
our members of the Executive Council, the presiding officers and chairpersons of the various committees, specifically the Public Accounts and Finance Committee, for their support during the annual appropriation bill process. Thank you to our organization, the African National Congress, for the continued trust and faith in, way, and faith in the way we execute our duties. I wish to thank the Head of Department of Provincial Treasury, Mercy Singh, the team in my office, when I don't sleep, they don't sleep, as well as the senior management and every, every single individual in Team Treasury, my family away from home, for their commitment to ensure that Provincial Treasury executes its legislative mandate. My gratitude goes out to my dearest family, my boys, importantly to our creator for our life, health and wisdom, and to you, of course, the people of this beautiful Free State Province. Honorable Speaker, Deputy Speaker, members of this legislature, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you. Kia leboa. Thank you very much, Honorable MEC Brown. Honorable members, can we continue to the debate? Our debate for Treasury is going to be an open debate. I'm going to call upon Honorable Vosi Chabalala on the podium to address the House. Honorable Deputy Speaker, to Mele Ki Kadimedi to Medi Sotsoshetes and Dienzwe. Aololo ki recognize the Honorable Speaker, the Chair of Chairs in his absentia, the Tonala Ronale Havane, the Honorable Premier and Tate Dukwana, Matuna Ushia Tinkwano, all the Honorable MSCs, the members of Parliament who are with us, members of the Provincial Legislature. Kitabe Geza Pose Holo. Hakisa Libisi Kompoyaka, who my president and Tate Taibos Kimono Ting, Skegao Kenya Matating, so now the president, Mara, once a president, always. The Honorable Executive Mayor of the Municipality of Machabing, the Honorable Councillors who are here with us. I stand before you today on behalf of our glorious movement, the African National Congress, to welcome and endorse the budget vote of the Free State Department of Treasury delivered by the esteemed MEC, Mechadisha Brown, as a member of the ANC. We are committed to ensure the prudence of the finances of our province. We recognize the importance of transparent and accountable financial management in promoting good governance and sustainable development. This budget speech aligns with our commitment to those principles as it is outlined, plans, for responsible financial management and sustainable resources use. Furthermore, Honorable Deputy Speaker, the budget vote echoes the ANC resolutions that speaks about the importance of the department in driving transformation and development in our province. The National Development Plan recognizes the crucial role that the finance and economic management play in promoting inclusive growth, development, and we must ensure that our province is on track to achieve these goals. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the budget speech outlines plans for responsible financial management, increased investment in public infrastructure, and sus sustainable resources use, all of which are critical for driving transformation and development in our province. And that is why, Honorable Premier and Honorable MEC, we must not shy away to empower our local 
black people ba thobo rona ba ba tshe go lokela hore se ke ra ba le tshabo to lo ka mogatlo busang hore re ba re ba etse e be ba ruwi mara ka tsela yeo e leng hore re etse e ba ka ofela hore we must all follow sub, supply chain processes to ensure that we also empower our black people and women and those who are disabled one of the notable areas covered in the speech is the commitment towards sustainable resource management this is a critical issue that affects not only the free state province but the country as a whole honorable deputy speaker the provincial treasury recognizes this is recognizes this and has outlined plan to promote the efficient use of the resources and minimize waste this approach aligns with the anc commitment to to adopting sustainable practices and ensure that we live a habitable planet for future generations we we commend this efforts and believe that it is a step in the right direction towards achieving environmental sustainability honorable deputy speaker the budget speech highlights the importance of public finance and assets management this is a crucial in ensuring that the resources are used efficiently effectively to promote economic growth and we therefore we welcome the resource allocation towards the public infrastructure and development projects honorable deputy speaker this project will create employment opportunities and stimulate economic growth in the province we must also ensure that assets such as property and equipment are managed and maintained efficiently so that they continue to benefit the provincial government and its people for years to come honorable deputy speaker the budget speech outlined the plans for the responsible responsible management of liability it is crucial that government businesses and individuals manage their liability effectively to avoid financial crisis we welcome the efforts to manage monitor debt levels and ensure that they do not become unsustainable this approach will ensure that the provincial government remains financially stable and can continue to deliver the service to the people of the free state in conclusion i urge all members of this house to welcome and embrace the budget vote it outlined plans for the sustainable resource management responsible responsible public finance and assets management and responsible liability management it is in line with the anc commitment to promote to to promoting sustainable development and good governance and that we continue to drive transformation and development for the benefit of our of all our people and that is why honorable mc makume we are calling upon the support of cocta to be able to give support to the municipalities and also mc brown to ensure that in terms of our own indigenous processes indigenous registers we are able to assist municipalities so that they are able to get a better equitable share and that is why i'm also calling upon the honorable premier in his own space of the cabinet lekhotla he must be able to persuade the cabinet to ensure and recognize that the free state have the poorest municipalities hence we are calling upon the review the review of the equitable share formula which does not benefit our people of the free state re re go tlile hlemba thong free starter e tshwana le di toropo tse ding ke ka ho ke kopang mo premier le honorable mc to ensure that we must never ever move away from ensuring that the equitable share formula definitely benefit our people hence it is important for municipalities to have a good indigent register policy to ensure that they are able to survive through the revenue collection because the municipalities and our own government cannot only rely on having the grants must be able to have the municipalities that have a better grading 
And that is why next time we are going to call upon the MEC for COCTA to ensure that our municipalities review the gradings of their municipalities so that they are able to get a better share from the national space. And that is why I'm calling upon, as a member of the Portfolio Committee of Finance, to ensure that uh, uh, we deal with the municipalities to be able to have a better capacity so that they are able to then uh, discharge their core functions to assist our people and, 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 and our communities. So I therefore say we then support the budget vote. Uh, May God bless you. Thank you very much, Honorable Vosi. Honorable Tlite, you may address the House. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Considering this is an open debate, through you, Premier and MECs Brown and Matai, can you imagine what income the province can generate just by writing fines to MECs speeding in their blue light brigades? It's madness, Speaker. We are law makers, not law breakers. So that's a lot of money that can come into the, into the province. Back to the budget and the mandate of this department. Let's zoom into program five. I want to zoom in as well. Municipal finance management and the 80 million to this end. And sometimes I feel sorry honorable for this members, department. Order. Since its constitutional powers are limited and unfortunately so, but rightly so. Municipalities ought to be self-sufficient, self-reliant, and generating, self-generating levels of government. In the free state, this is simply not happening. Municipalities are mismanaged, lacking decent planning during IDP processes, and ultimately unrealistic budgets. Now, of the underfondsen of unrealistische begrotings is, ons municipaliteite is financiële rampe, en ons inwoners is raad op, geïrriteerd en moesmoedig, soos in die municipaliteit. Elke jaar beklaai die openbare rekening komitee met municipaliteite en elke jaar beloof om net beter te wees. This year is no exception. 20 million rand for Operation Clean Audit and another 8 million for municipal support. Two departments share the latter responsibilities and yet we see very little improvements. In fact, I would go so far as to say that money spent by this department as well as COCTA are fruitless expenditures. There's simply just no turnaround in, in the financial woes of municipalities and improvements in agent reports are not enough in EC. You know that. Speaker, Xavier, I feel for the department because the municipalities are credit in voting not to be self-standard to function. Come on, look at this municipality. Matcha Bank's debt on Eskom and debt on Siri Bank, now Bloemwater, is miljarden. And we know that in the short term, our inwoners. This municipality has a begrotings tekort of more than a half billion rand. Om die waarheid te sê, sy begrotingstekort beloop meer as sy verwachte inkomste. Hoekom? Een swak invorderingskoers. In drie boekjare kon Masha Beng dit nie recht kry om meer as 56% van sy verwachte inkomste in te vorder nie. But MEC, your hands are tied. Municipalities are cash trapped. You don't have to identify them. They all have financial woes. And that's the legacy of the ANC. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tlute. Honorable MEC Kolo, you may address the House. Order, Honorable Members. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Deputy Speaker, His Excellency, the Premier of the Free State. Honorable Mkulisi Jukwana, the Chief Whip of the Legislature, Honorable Members of the Legislature, traditional leaders that are present today, mayors and councillors that are present, in particular the hosting um, executive mayors, that is Meta Kumbana and executive mayor Tandukolo Kalipa, government officials, media houses, Esteemed guests, comrade Patriots, Lisa Chaba, Kaka Karazo, Safri Stata, Galudumedisa, Lucy Waleta Silakaje. Honorable Deputy Speaker, extend 
allow me to extend my deepest gratitude to MEC Brown for their commendable budget vote speech and for their continued good work in her department. MEC Brown, your deliverance today reflected the key principles of good governance, transparent and accountable use of public finances and resources. Honorable Speaker, the emancipation of women remains a cardinal goal and an anchor for a free and democratic country. This conviction is beyond rhetoric. The ANC continues its endeavors to unite all South African women, notwithstanding their different experiences arising from race, class, ethnicity, religion, and the country's demographics. Given the legacy of women's oppression in general and black women in particular, the ANC bias towards working class and rural poor women remains steadfast. In line with this strong-held assertion of our movement, we applaud, Honorable Speaker, the Department of Treasury for their readiness to concert efforts in improving the representation of women in senior management positions from 39% to at least 42% in pursuit of the national target of 50% for jobs and within all the sectors including in the skills development thereof. Speaker, the recipe for any good governance lies in the good conduct and capable human resource. Treasury Department diagnosed that it needs the presiding officers to deal effectively with the grievances and disciplinary processes. This step taken by the department to train members of senior management will unquestionably assist in realization and, and application of a systematic approach to addressing the consequences of employees' actions, whether positive or negative, within a workplace. This is rather a clear sign that the department has expressed a will for consequence management. In delivering his inspirational speech for the ANC January 8th statement of 2023, His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa captured the moment and mood aptly when he said that the ANC will strengthen its capacity and mechanisms to ensure the accountability of those it has deployed in government to implement the democratic electoral mandate that the people of South Africa have entrusted it with. He continued also that the principle of meritocratic deployment will be upheld in order to ensure that the people's interests are advanced. And he also emphasized that the ANC-led government will ensure accountability and consequence management by strengthening reporting mechanisms for all public representatives. Speaker, it should be noted that this consequence management approach applied by ANC government is premised on promoting service delivery, socio-economic transformation, and sustainable development, accountability, and people-centered governance. Honorable Deputy Speaker, the ANC also reaffirms its long-standing principle that corruption is an enemy of the people and is therefore a counter-revolutionary act that must be combated and defeated without any expectation. The Department of Treasury carries this mandate with pride because MEC Khadija Brown highlighted that the department will be embarking on a program to conduct lifestyle orders for the entire department. This is an important management tool to prevent and detect fraud and corruption in the public service. It helps to ensure that the lifestyles of government employees are in line with their level of income. It is very encouraging to see that the department aligns itself with the national anti-corruption strategy which has provided the policy direction for implementation of a range improvements, including strengthening reporting, 
investigations and actions that are designed to address gaps in governance and financial management of public resources. In this regard, one of the five commitments and more directly related to this strategy is the agency placed on reducing and eradicating instances of unauthorized, irregular, fruitless and wasteful expenditures as this can be ascribed to different levels of financial management. Deputy Speaker, when one speaks of an unqualified audit report, it is a financial report to which the Auditor General expresses an opinion that the financial statements of a department are free of any material misstatements which fairly presents the financial affairs of the department and that such financial reporting is compliant with, with applicable legislation. In accordance with this, we share the joy of the Department of Treasury for having sharpened their controls and improved their audit outcome to an unqualified with no findings for 2021-22 and 2022-23 with clean audit. The department also continued to, to perfect working the talks of government promise to maintain 100% record of paying of uncontested investors from suppliers within 30 days with a declared intention to continue continue to maintain it in the 2023-24 financial year. The department deserves to be acclaimed for the job well done in handling of the public funds and also honoring payment of the service providers on time for their progression in their pursuit for helping government with economic growth and job creations. The department, Deputy Speaker, has further reaffirmed its commitment to supporting suppliers in the province and will conduct supply chain management roadshows across the province to sensitize service providers on the new regulations of 2022 and how it will affect them in terms of requests for quotations and bids. As stated by Honorable M.C. Brown, this will be done in conjunction with CIDB, CEDA, and SARS as essential stakeholders to provide information on completion of bid documents and factors to consider when compiling bid prices. Deputy Speaker, the First State Government continues to give rise to provincial own revenue and this reflects a government that is focused on economic development and taking necessary policy measures to accomplish that objective. This is a true developmental state in our revolutionary vocabulary. MEC Brown also expressed that our own revenue target was increased during the revenue adjustment budget with additional of over 121 million made available for the province and we like to applaud to MEC Brown. And to emphasize the significance of own revenue, Provincial Treasury has funded own revenue initiatives under the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure as well as Community Safety Roads and Transport. This funding will be able to be utilized for refurbishment of properties for rental purposes and security upgrades at various registration authorities. This report by MEC Brown, it rests well with the sentiments uttered by the MEC of Public Works and Infrastructure on her budget vote tabled on Wednesday, the 3rd of May, 2023, at Zastro. Madam Speaker, allow me also to reflect good strides taken by the department in working with the local government. It remains a mission of this department to impact positively on the financial health of the municipalities. It is for this reason that Provincial Treasury had deployed financial skills to Copano local municipality to assist with the improvement of the municipalities, financial management environment, and outstanding financial statements. The department has also undertaken a role 
of monitoring the audit process as well as to ensure that financial statements of all municipalities in the province are submitted on time as per the requirements of 126 of Municipal Finance Management Act. Moreover, the provincial treasury will keep reviewing the SCM and provincial procurement policies of the municipalities in order to ensure that they are compliant with the sub SCM regulations to reduce unwanted expenditure and enhance local government service delivery. And we are submitting to you Honorable Brown, that all these documents that you are going to present in the municipalities, let them be reader friendly for all those who will be utilizing such documents because sometimes it becomes a burden to our service providers when they are dealing with the SCM documents. And we are pleading with your office that let those documents be user friendly, Mayor Brown. Honorable Deputy Speaker, let me reiterate the statement by the Honorable Mukolisi Dukwana in his State of Province address when he said, I quote, our social protection programs are a reflection of a caring government. Our social safety net is a conduct to economic inclusion, poverty alleviation, but most importantly, improved quality of life, close quote. Kirata Olebua, Premier Kamansu Au Ahau, Nagonya Hauya, Province, State of Province Address. Speaker, the budget vote presented here today is an opportunity to reflect on the state of our province finances and the economy more broadly, but most importantly, to understand how this supports our social and economic objectives. This is the challenge of our time to build a province in which all people have a decent standard of living, access to economic opportunities, and opportunities to pursue their dreams. Allow me, as I conclude, Deputy Speaker, to close with the teachings of Spirella when he reminds us that, I quote, there's no thrill in easy sailing when the skies are clear and blue. There's no joy in merely doing things which anyone can do, but there is more satisfaction that is mighty and sweet to take when you reach a destination that you thought you never make, close quote. Through our liberation struggle and the advent of our democratic era, we have shown incredible perseverance, humanity, selfness, and courage. With this debate speech of mine, I therefore support the budget speech of Mehadija Brown. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Honorable M. Koloi. Honorable Mashati. You may address the house. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Madam Speaker. Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable Members of the Provincial Legislature, Members of the Executive Council, Executive Mayors and Mayors present, Councillors present, Leaders of the Opposition Parties, Traditional Leaders present, Director General and Heads of Departments, Distinguished Guests, Comrades and Friends. Madam Speaker, please allow me to remind the House of one of the greatest thinkers this world has ever produced when characterizing the difficult conditions we are sometimes find ourselves in in the struggle to better the lives of our people. In his 1852 writings, Karl Marx stated that, I quote, men make their own history 
but they do not make it easy or they do not make it as they please. They do not make it under self-selected circumstances, but under circumstances existing already, given and transmitted from our past." Close quote. That is the reality of the country and the world we are facing today, of shrinking economies resulting in limited budgets to meet all the needs of our people. For example, global growth estimates that 2023 have been revised lower. The IMF projects that global growth will slow down from estimated 3.4% in 2022 to 2.9% 2 in 2023. However, we will continue to soldier on as this government Madam Speaker, that is the context in which our global and national economies are located. Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker, on this 110th year of the Women's anti pass campaigns led by Umam Charlotte Matreke, we appreciate the steps taken by the Provincial Treasury in driving the Provincial Research Colloquium, which amongst others is aimed at equipping our policymakers with in-depth knowledge and valuable holistic information. As stated by the MEC, all the presented research solemnly focus on how to facilitate a technology-driven economy. As a province, we can't be left behind by the advances on the fourth industrial revolution. Our belief is that new technologies such as artificial intelligence can provide a platform for economic growth and development that can expand job creation and self-employment. This is in line with our January 8th statement resolution on the fourth industrial revolution that says the ANC should join progressive forces across the globe who are working on to ensure the digital revolution is not appreciated by elites to produce and sustain social inequality, but should help in the betterment of improving the lives of our people. Finally, Madam Speaker, it is indeed true that the provincial treasury has funded own revenue initiatives under the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, as well as Community Safety, Roads and Transport, as stated by the MEC. Funding commitments for a refurbishment of properties for rental purposes from its own revenue initiative is highly appreciated by the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure. For instance, in my own budget speech on the 3rd of May, Honorable Speaker, I stated that the Department is resolute to utilize state-owned properties for office accommodation and for this reason has identified a number of dilapidated buildings that need to be refurbished to accommodate client departments. This initiative is assisting the department to reduce payments of operating leases and to improve the status of buildings in the province. For example, in the past two financial years, the department refurbished about five buildings that were dilapidated. And they will be used uh, as, 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 as government offices in order to make sure that we reduce funding that has been utilized by this particular uh, department. I further stated that in the MTF period 2023-2024 to 2025-2026, the department intends to refurbish the following buildings, unutilized building in Lady Brandt, unutilized building in Betuli, Santon Stone building in Fixburg, Tennyson for the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, Botsabelo for the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, and also for the Department of Social Development. Honorable Speaker, Retlamele relele fa pa relele muso African National Congress retauletse mo sebetso ntseng ke le fa pa le na treasury. This department was able to achieve a clean audit. Indeed, normally we say we don't uh, appreciate a fish for swimming, but ha ba fitlela se fa le mona na bana ba ka ngqe. Ba rata hore jwetse ka mogong ba sebetsang handle ka maneka Western Cape. Me retlamele ge ba hopotsa gore gona 
le rona mafepeng a rona re sebetsa hantle le fapha lena la la treasury together with department of cocta have done very well and i think they deserve a round of applause for receiving clean audits honorable speaker taba e kgologolo ka ga budget ena e bua ka payments of service providers in 30 days le fapha lena la treasury le gone wetsa bonete ba hore ba patala di service providers within 30 days this is a very important aspect of this budget vote because our inability to pay our service providers on time etsa bo etsa hore di gwebo potlana di iwe etsa hore bo ga gwebo potlana ba se ka ba gona o tswala pele ka mosebetse bo a o yetsang ho bane ba sapatalwa ka nako ha re sapatale di service providers ka nako bo mmele bo ntate ba aghi ba afrika bora ba aghi ba free starter batho ba rona ba leng gore ba dira di gwebo ha ba gona go tswala pele ka mmere ko wa bone mmere re tshwanetse ga thauletsa le fapha le gore le dira bo nnete ba gore le fapha le patala di di service providers within 30 days honorable speaker kabelo ya di chalate ya le fapha le ka pa what we call a budget vote of this department speaks about lifestyle audit ha ba fihlela mo sefaleng ba ba ka tla gore le le ka fa ba rata go bua ka gore ka mogong re leng muso o tletseng bobodu o leng gore ha o dire sentle me ga ba ka ka ba ya go police station ba re go re tshwarisa go dira bonete ba gore tse ba di buantse di gona go sala morago ke molao me le fapha le 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 etelletsweng pele ke me Khadija Brown o re tlhalosetsa gore ba tlo go dira lifestyle audit me o re go rona on this platform gore o tlo go sumulla ka yene jaka ile yena a etelletse ni fapha le pele me Khadija Brown ke ba tla go go theoletsa me ke re gona le matsapa mo lefapheng le la gago mara re a dumela mo ditikatikanyontse tsa ditshelete ha re a re shebile 2023 2024 financial year o tlo go dira bonete ba gore di vacant post di skara na di mafapha rona ana le bothata ba holy hut ba gaetsho e tla be le di acting e di acting ka fa le ka fa ka la kongwe go acta go go dira gore di tlamelo tse re ke tshwanetse re di fese tshaba sa rona di skara di khella se tshaba sa rona me ke a tshepa gore me ga di ja brown ja ka o tlhalusitse go mpiono yana gore mo ditikanong tsa ga go tsa ditshelete tsa 2023 2024 o tlo go dira bonete ba go o kwala se gheu sa di position tse di linteng tse di le funded go dira bonete ba gore di tshebeletse di fitlhela se tshaba me re re ha o ntso o tsenya ha o mmawe e re batla go bona bo mme ba le ka mo go se hlohlolong re kopa go bona 50% ya bo mme e le bone in the executive management me o sa si ba tsha morago go ne le bona mo nakong ye ya botshelo ra bona go ba tsha ba khona ba na le bokgoni ba 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 nang le di qualifications ba ba nang le di expertise ha ba fuwe menyetla re rata gore go wena ga theoletsa mo palo mo tikanyong ya gago ya di chalete ka program e o buang ka yone e leng gore ke a financial literacy re a kopa me ga di ja brown ha o ntso o dira di do to do o dira bonete ba go go batho ba rona ba ithuta ka chalete go ne ta ba kgolo go gore batho ba rona ba na le go kira madi ba 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 sa itse go ba dirise ya re kopa ha o ntso o dira road show e o se ka le bala ba ge ba rona ba maplas go ne ba dula ba saletse morago ka metla le matse re a kopa ha o tsena o tsene go ba aghe ba rona ba maplas me khadija ha ke feleletsa ke batla go theoletsa program ya gago ya ACM road show re 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 le moso african national congress re kopa gore batho ba rona gantsintsi ba tle ba digile dikgwebo me ha go tlhagisile ha go nale le le ano la gore ba participate in the mainstream of economy ba na le mathata go ne ba sa itse gore di tender tse tsa rona tse di bereka ka tsela le mogontseng ya me re re a le boga go ya ka chebo ya matlho le go ya ka budget vote ya gago ya le semlo monse sa 2023 2024 wa tlhalosa gore o le go ruta batho ba rona ka tax compliance go nne bontsi ba na le mathata go patala di tax e re ha ba file kgwebo ba ba sa patale tax ba ba tsana mo mathating re kopa gape o ruta batho ba rona ka CSD online registration e bila ho idira ha o kwadisa batho gore ba itse gore ha ba batla gona di service provider go bereke ga yang 
re kopa o ska ba sia ba age ba maplasi le makeishine a rona re kopa gape ha ntso o dira do to do e in a form of a road show o dire bo nete ba gore ka go nna ke nna mastense wa lefapha rona public works ke gona bo mastense bo rastense ba ba dira bo nete ba gore mafapha o tle ana le budulo ke rona ba leng gore ba jere moruo wa free starter sentle sentle gone ke gona re a gang dikolo ke gona re a gang dipetlele ke gona re a gang ditlinic bontsi ba batho ba rona ba batlang go participate in the mainstream of our economy they do not understand and know availability of construction in government opportunities le ha rona re tla dira mmere kwa rona ja ka lefapha wa public works and infrastructure re kopa o nno re thuse ha ntso tsena mo di masipaleng o khoiletse molaetsa o gore re batla gore batho ba rona ba ikemele ke nnete pusho e tshwanetse e dire ma ana gore go nne le mmere ko mo teng ga ma Afrika borwa impa re a dumela gore chalete re tshwereng jwa le ka government it's not enough to make sure that we employ each and every individual me re batla go bona batho ba rona ba tsena mo di khwebo e bile ba benefit in the mainstream of economy re buile ra re ja ka bo mastense ke rona ge diram bonete ba go batho ba rona ba mafapha a mantsintsi a o otlhe a a ba accommodated chalete re patalang ya di lisi me khadija intsi tota re tshwanetse ga bua le bo our landlords gore ba dira yang go thusa mmusho in making sure that we have our people also benefit in the value chain of our leases re patala madia mantsi di million million di le dintse re di patala ko di lease ma re tla mele re itse gore ke bo mang ba ba dilang ka security mo teng ga me a go e ke bo mang ba ba kolomakang me a go e batho ba rona ba gone go benefita in the ministry of economy ke le bogile go menegane honorable deputy speaker me ke a le boga ba Afrika ba Afrika borwa ba agi ba free starter mo premier re go tlompile le sedi thank you honorable masatsi honorable david van suren me address the house Thank you honorable deputy speaker and good afternoon to all the people of Machabeng. Before I begin honorable deputy speaker, I would like to address one issue. Over the past 4 weeks we have been taking parliament to the people with these budget debates. While the Pro programming committee approved this, the magnitude and financial implications of the program should have been discussed and uh, in full with the committee. Honorable Speaker the MEC of Finance Honorable Brown should have intervened and put a stop to this extravagant waste of money. These venues that you see here, tents, aircons, chairs, food and countless other expenses were taken to six other towns and has cost the legislature millions of rands, apparently more than 7 million rand. While the institution is already under significant financial pressure, The legislature could have visited Welcom and all the other towns and used existing infrastructure. This money could have been spent so that this and all the other host towns could have benefited from it. We must leave something tangible behind for the community so that they can experience a legislature that cares about them and about fulfilling the legislative mandate. That is not what is happening here. The money spent here is rolled up, packed up eaten up and transported out of here the only benefit the community sees is a plate of food we need to change the way we do things honorable speaker we need to think of people and spend the money to permanently better their lives beyond the single meal this is this almost look like a circus to me akbar ali er brown dear is speaker ek moet die eer gee wat daar eer toe kom Ik kan baie tevrede wees met die skoon audit wat die Departement van Finansies ontvang het in die mees onlangste auditeur generaal se verslag. Maar ek moet dit dalk weer in hierdie agbare huis sê. Dit beteken nie dat dienste van op grondvlak gelewer word as 'n departement 'n skoon audit kry nie. Ons kan net uh, na van die departemente kyk 
en wat ons hier buiten sien. Achbare LER, die Departement van Finansies speel een kardinale rol in die samenstelling van die begroting om te verseker dat die inwoners van die vrystaat die dienste kry waarvoor die provinciale regering een constitutionele verantwoordelijkheid het. Achbare speaker, dier die loop van die begrotings toesprake het ek vir al die nieuwe LER die voordeel van die twyfel gegee dat hulle moendlik die kennis, kwaliteit en integriteit sal toepas om die haaglike omstandighede wat dier die ANC regering oor die laaste 29 jaar geskep is te probeer verander en verbeter. Maar ek sien dat hulle die selfde is as al hulle voorgangers en is bereid om voort te gaan met die selfde retoriek. Wat bedoel ek met die selfde retoriek? Die deel het in al die debatte van al die departementen geopen waar, waar dat tekortkoming is in die begroting en waar die ANC akkoord val. Hulle het die mense van die vrystaat op een groot skaal te leergestel. Ek hoef nie vir al die mense hier teenwoordig te verduidelik hoe die ANC en die LER aan my rechterkant die mense val nie. Ek hoef nie te sê dat daar dorpe is wat weke sonder water gaan nie dat ons paie mense sy levens eis nie en veroorzaak dat bezighede vir al op plattelandse dorpe toemaak nie. Ek hoef nie te sê dat die rewel dier die straat loop en ons riviere besoedel nie. Hier in Matcha Beng sien, reik en voel jy die besoedeling. Ek hoef nie te verduidelik dat die huise wat die departement van menselike nederzetting moet bou vir mense wat het brood nodig het, nie gebouw kan word nie, want hulle het oor die laaste drie jaar amper 400 miljoen rand verloor om in die departement die die begroting kon spandeer nie. Die gemiddelde prijs van die RDP huis is ongeveer 200.000 rand. Indien hulle die gealokeerde 400 miljoen rand gebruik het, kon die departement 2.000 huise gebouw het. 2.000 huise. Daar is nie een huis vir die verloore geld gebouw nie en alles is teruggegeen in nationale tesorie. Dit is krimineel. Achbare Brown, jy het een jaar terug gesê, ons moet jy en die ANC een geleentheid gee om die veranderinge aan te bring. Dit is nou een jaar later en dienstlevering en finansiële bestuur is slechter as ooit. Daar is een paar veranderinge onder die LER aangebring, maar dit beteken nie as jy die stoele op die Titanic rondskuif dat die skip nie meer gaan sink nie. Achbare Brown, die vrystaat, het nie meer tyd nie. Jy departement het een ongelooflike brangige rol gegeven om te verseker dat die begroting klop, maar ook om een pertinente rol te speel om corruptie te stop en individue te vervolg. Ons hoor net van acties wat geneem word in corrupte ambtenare, en jy sal het seker weer nou bevestig, maar ons mense sien niemand achter tralies nie. Onderbel mag laat sê through jy spieke, we have gone to the police, We will go again to the police. That's why your previous premier is in court today. And some of your MECs, previous MECs, and will go to court and we will ensure that they go to court. You know why? Because you do not do that. You don't, never lay a criminal charge against any of your own people. And we will enforce that and ensure that, that uh, oversight is done there. MEC Brown, die Departement van Finansies moet departementen en municipaliteite bijstaan om beter financiële bestuur toe te pas wat sal bijdra tot beter audit uitkomste. Het is onaanvaarbaar dat die departement geld bewillig aan municipaliteite terwijl hulle swak financiële bestuur toe pas. Kan ons nie wees dat ons dit doen nie. Die municipaliteite gebruik hierdie fondse om hulle lopende uitgaves te dek. Throughout the budget debate, the Democratic Alliance has emphasized the shortcomings of each department and what a devastating effect this has on the community. Throughout the debates, the participating MECs and ANC members have had the opportunity to explain to the people why they were an epic failure when it comes to service delivery. And please don't tell me you get the services in this town because we can see it. And why billions have been lost and mismanaged. They have had the opportunity to confess. They have had the opportunity to explain to the residents of the Free State that they have a feasible plan free of corruption and fraud and filled with quality services and prosperity. But what did the ANC do throughout the debates? They have shifted the blame. And this happened in each and every debate that we had. They have shifted the blame. It was a white man named Jan van Riebeek. Can you believe it? who is responsible for the present decay in services. He, he caused these roads to look like this. 
According to the INC, it was the apartheid oh, the government that didn't honorable, build. Honorable Van Furen, just a minute. Members of the community, with due respect, you in the in our, in our proceedings, you are not allowed to take part. So please, please don't part, don't take part, so that we keep the decorum of the house. Thank you very much. Continue, honourable member. Uh, thank you, chair. According to the ANC, it was the apartheid government that didn't build but destroyed ESCOM, Transnet, Telcom, SIA, and the formerly functional road network. In the Western Cape, the government has already taken measures to mitigate, and I don't want to listen to this, but please listen to this. This budget made no provision for how we're going to address load shedding. To mitigate the effects of load shedding through various measures, including providing 200,000 load shedding packs to poor households. So these poor people have got the, these packs and actually can, can fight load shedding. Here in the Free State, the ANC run Mafubi municipality has blocked attempts by the rural maintenance to free the municipality from load shedding through solar energy. What is wrong with you? What, what is wrong with you people to stop this if you can actually help the people, the poor people on the ground? Don't let the ANC tell you that they are a caring party. They are not. If they cannot get money out of a contract, they stop that contract. They will not approve it. I can promise you that this is what happened there. It doesn't matter what uh, uh, harm it causes. I have to say, Honorable Brown, that I was quite disappointed on Wednesday when you stood up and said that the horrific road system in the Free State is caused by apartheid. I thought you had more integrity and would not grandstand for the audience. I did expect it's from all the other ANC members. But I thought when it comes to finances, you might have the integrity to explain and debate why your government has spent the last 29 year, nine years failing the people. The ANC and its representatives need to explain why they are causing more harm now and why they have neglected their promise made in 1994. We all acknowledge that apartheid was a discriminatory system. But it is sad to think that your default setting is to blame apartheid instead of taking responsibility for your own current actions that are destroying our communities. In Afrikaans praat hulle van a love art. Dit is seker een van die eerste lesse wat ek my kinders geleer het. Dit is dat jy kan besluite neem in die lewe, maar jy moet verantwoordelikheid daarvoor aanvaar en nie een love art wees en die gevolge van jou besluite wil ontduik nie. Through you speaker, Honorable Meku, you refer to your five-year-old daughter, who you said understands more than some of the opposition members. Maybe you should have your five-year-old explain politics, integrity, and taking responsibility for your actions to the ANC members. Maybe then they will be able to grasp this concept. Akbar speaker, weet jy waar aan die ANC my laat dink? Ek het een story gehoor van een persoon wat een onwettige vlieglicensie gekoop het, sonder dat hy vir die opleiding gegaan het. Die ongelooflikste deel van die story is, dat toe hy sy gekoopte licensie ontvang het, toe het hy gedink hy kan een vliegtuig vlieg. Weet jy hoe gevaarlik is dit? Dit is precies hoe die kaders in die ANC is. Hulle word aangestel as MM's, CFO's, burgermeesters van municipaliteite, sonder die nodige ondervinding en opleiding, en dan dink hulle, hulle kan die vliegtuig vlieg. Dit is crazy. Ek het een rakpie africhter gehad, hy was hier van welkom af wat altyd my vir die spelers gesê het, know your limits. Ek wil vandag die selfde vir hierdie mens aan my rechter kan sê, know your limits. As jy nie die vaardighede en die bevoegdheid het nie, moet nie besluit te neem wat katastrofiese gevolge vir die mens in die vrystaat inhou nie. Die ANC as die regerende organisatie het die verantwoordelikheid om te verseker dat hulle openbare verteenwoordigers individue is met karakter, integriteit en kwaliteit. Nie mense wat korup, skelm en onbevoeg is nie. When I leave this podium and the next speaker addresses you, they will fall back to their default setting and tell you that the terrible state of this province and this town is not because of the ANC cadre deployment or the fact that they appointed incompetent and corrupt leaders. They will deny that. 
This is all that the ANC has to offer. What I know as a fact is that the voters here in Machabing got what you voted for. But please know this, you deserve better. You are now in a position to make better choices. If you want better services and a brighter future, vote for the DA. If you want poverty, a broken society and a poor infrastructure, vote for, vote for the ANC. But remember, the choice ultimately lies with you. You must decide what your and your family's future look like. You and only you. You have one choice every five years and then you have to live with that choice. Make it count. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Van Furen. Members of the community, Kisai Pileza, let us keep the decorum of the house. As the members of the community, we are not allowed to take part in the plenary. Kabi Kokovet. Let me take this opportunity and give Honorable Mangrisa, the Chief Whip, to address the House. Deputy Speaker, Speaker of the Legislature, the Premier of the Free State, Babum Kolisi, Leader of Government, Business, Comrade TK, TO, Members of the Executive, and Members of Parliament. Uh, voter from the NCOP, welcome. Uh, the Mayor of Machabing, Comrade Tandu Kolo, Kalipa. Sisinta Kubana, the mayor of the district. Uh, Mujalefa Buti, the chief whip, I saw you. Comrade Reed and Comrade Toki, respectively, the leadership of the NC in the Machabing district or region. Comrade Pesani, the NEC member of the NC. Uh, Omstov, Salga president from here in the Free State, our own home brood. Uh, all other ex-members of parliament were here today. And uh, Umama Wetu, the first woman citizen of the province, Mamuka Lilele Tutukwana, members of the public, you are welcome. Kikala mona kilebo ha libito la mukhatwa rona wa ANC lo amuhela budget vote yena ya mekadish. Reza maile ufikela tati lena rebea ya ukate la budgete kara province ya free starta. Ntelelo yeta poso reza kabu hole or resalu sete batwaro. Ma emo au resebe tanga tasa wona. At a Otaro number seventeen one and the road to Erie, Bufoco di Baron, Musebetin one on the road to Erie. Make our hotel with a religio Guaditaba, Cauto Tobala, Canete, or Batuarona, but even my Emma Arona more lente, Mani Moba Rumin de Palamente. Jale, make a dish a brown or habu a monacadi ticanes. Liana Abuad ticanes to the province of o hlalusitse ka bo phara bo emo ba di tshelete ka haro province ya Freestad le hore na re ka gona o fihlella eng tlasa mathata ana e rileng hona a muruo ona o batlang e le o ya tlase ka ka tsatsi le tshabang le dikela jwa le ri le ra hlalosa re le mogahlo wa sechaba hore ma emong ana a bohloko a hlokolosi Religile ka hotle hotle ho etsa bogoni bo re na le mbona u fihlella ditabatabelo tsa sechaba sa rona ka kakaretso re mona machabentsa tsing lena ho tlo hlalosetsa ka kakaretso tse di ntsa dintho tse re di fihleletseng le tse o re sa di fihlella 
me re bo emong bona re bile re hlompha le o batla ho totobetsa hore ma emo ane re iphumana ho hona re fihletse ho hona ka lebaka la sebeti le mamello le buitelo bo boholo ba batho ba rona ba ile mbalwana mbalwana la tokolong ene re na le nyona botsimela deputy speaker a re hlophisetsa ho tlo be ya puo ya rona mona re batla ho totobatsa hore ntshetso pele kapa diphihlelo tse o re dientseng ma ikemisetso kapa se o re batla ngo se fihlella ma emong ane re le ngona re batla re thabile ka mogwa o re sebeditseng ka teng ho hlokomela hore ma emo e re sebeditseng ka tlasa ona ane a le hlokolosi jwa me re bontsitse tswelo pele e golo maphelong a rona le o etsa di sacrifice tsengata hore re fihle mona mo re lenteng o a bontsa me khadisha hore mane le fapeng la bona ba bile qetelong ba hira motho a ikarabelang HOD me 86% ya department eo ina le batho ba sebetsang diposong tseo tse patallwang ho leka ho bona hore le fapha le bo emong ba o pheta mo sebetsi wa hona ka kakaretso le ka bogone bo ba khonang ka teng re a thaba ho ba le ntate mokolis puong ya hai mani e ya sopa o ile a hlalosa hore mana mafape re tlameya ho lekola batho ba sebetsa mafape hore na Musebetsi o ba wetsa le tshelete ba ilefellwa na elekana le bophelo bo ba bophela ha ba uphela ka ntle ho tshelete e o ikena o tlameya o hlalosa hore na o thola kae maemo a wa jwalo me re tsebe hore ha wetsi botsotsi ka pa bokuntshwana re a bontsa hore muso o sebetsa hantle muso o leka ka hohle hohle hore o sebetse le batho ka kakaretso le mekhatlo ka kakaretso le batho bohle ba na le nthasello ya tsamaiso ya muso ka mogwa o phethaetse me ke ka ho rereng ho comrade kadisha forward ever and backward never rere ha re fitla ho na jwa le muso wa free start batho ba free start ka kakaretso batho ba sebetsang le muso batho ba sebetsang ba fana ka tshebetso muso ba na bo ra dikgwebo ba patalwa mona freestyle ba patalwa nakong eo e loketseng ba patalwe within 30 days ena ile ka ho etsa bonnete ba hore ba khone ho nyolowa iskaba di smme forever ibe bo ra khwebo ba hudile ba khona ho iketsetsa ka hohle hohle ka mo ba khona nkate me re khothetse ke ntshetso pele ena ya bontsang hore mafapheng mona freestyle ho bonala e ka ba sebedisa di chelete handle Mili AGSA wa initi fatsa taba yeo me re a tholetsa ntho a hore ba bontsha ho na le ntshetso pele ya hore di chelte tsa lona di matsong a matla me di hlokomeleile ene di sebetsa ntho e tlameleng di etse me re a dumela hore clean audit ha si ona fela e tlameya ho tsama mmo le hore le thole di tshebeletso ho ba ha o thusi hore o tlo re brekela ka rona le 10000 di baki impa bana ba lapa tsama ya chelte o sebetse baneng impa o khone ho ikarabella hore sebeditse handle miki ka hore dumelang hore ho na le dialectical relationship between clean audit and service deliver twa le re re rona deputy speaker re lebo wa homena hane ka mo sebetse o motle ona o bontshitsweng ke department ya rona ya finance o eteletse mpele ke me khadisha brown o bontsitseng ro sebedise tlasa maemo ana a a hlokolosi a tsamaiso tsa ditshelete tlasa maemo ana a hlokang capacity e ngate ya hore batho ba tsebe mo sebetsi wa ho tlasa maemo a complex e re operating under wa me re a lebo wa comrade vos chabala ha o ile wa hlalosa ka o mena hana hore department e na e chatsi mabapi le ho hlokomela di challenge tsa sechaba mabapi le ho etsa bonnete ba hore challenge ya sechaba e sebeletsa sechaba hore department e ene isusumeletsa 
kapa ichorisa maemo a hore ho be le ntshetso pele ka pa development and ena le chebelo pele because development by its nature is futuristic and department de e as champion and custodian ya development e bontsa ka hohle hohle hore it's on track and e ke meseditse hape hore e promote economy ya ro re re mane mogatlong e kitsong ho re ne re batla south africa e prosperous e mbara o tlwisisa hore prosperity ya re share le batho ba ro ke hore re enhance e gone ho grow so that we are able to share it and we thank you for identifying that important niche in as far as we are going and re adumel hore mogwa molawana ona o sebetsang ho fana ka ditshelete ho naha ho bo maspala le ho provincial government o tlameya o hlokomelo mme o batla o hlokomedisiswe and ke a tseba o mstof tla dumelana le naore ha holo holo bo maspala ba thola percentage e nyane ya tshelete empa e le hore service delivery ha holo ya te ho batla la ho na le eh eh bo fokodi ba ba pingwe ho ba ho tlameya hore e nyulle ho bo maspala ho ba ke bona ba leng call face ya rona ya service deliver re a lebo wa mekoloi ka un identify as part of the speech of the MEC hore bomme ba ba pala karolo e golo ka ro sechaba sa rona how u develop amme how support amme u support as cha how u di samme u di sas cha impa how u di sandad u di sa individual because bomme ke karolo ya u thea as cha bo emo bona ke batla ho jwetsa eh mo premier wa rona ke buruti ke ntatu wa ka ha ke le le bollong a re honna ya zinto ntatu wa ka na rata lo ansa me wa ka kana go tsola and you must notify the operative ways ko rona rata lo ansa me wa there was no point where my mother retaliated a re ya zinto o nyoko umthande umhlonibe ngoba o nyoko o knike impile ke o ngekho apha ngile kwakhe and comrade sidiko lo has identified that through the speech of the of of the mc and we appreciate because our government in terms of addressing the imbalances of the past is addressing women as the most critical element of our society because women empowerment is a nation empowerment re a leboa ho mena ka ne hore o hlalo o se hore mogahlong wona wa rona wa anc ha re khetha batho ho tloa hona jwa le ho ya pele tla sa keta pele e matla ya ntate serela ra maphosa o khetha motho a e ra ka hara stulo sa o ba moeta pele wa ENC ka pa ka hara stulo sa mmuso o khethuwa ka system e bitswang meritocracy re nkile mani chain e bolela hore o khethuwa ka tsebo ya hao le bogone bona le mbona le ka hore na ka ha ro sechaba so leng ho sona na sechaba se o appreciate na ha o khethwe fela ka hore mohlomong wa para ha ntle ka pa bua ha mnate mara o tshwanetse bona le kelelo e tshatsi ya o etela sechaba pe ene ke yona ntho e matlafatsang rona sechaba sa rona le ANC o bontsa hore re nkela hlong ditaba tsa tsa sechaba sa rona me re a dumela hore o se dibolela tswalo ka masters hore le fa phalena la tsa ditshelete lona le lona le sebetsa mmo ho nyolla bo ra khwebo ba rona potlana di contractors tsa rona di thola monyetla wa hore ba hole ba thola monyetla hore ba be le business because private does not support them private doesn't care about our people private care about maximizing profit that's all in any case today in south africa private companies make more money than they did in apartheid times so they don't care they are fine it is only government through its programs to support our people and we thank you leadership for doing that 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 diligent job and of course financial educations play a major role akitsebeng tadi tlutong tsa re di blue light di etsa akitsebeng kopana ka le di blue light I think we have got different responsibility. Chief, don't come here and grandstand when it's not necessary. Ritle mo ho tlo hlalo o sa fela gore na. Maemo a rona a ditaba a sebeditswa ho fihla jwa. E seng eh mihlolo e ntse buwa ke ntate tlute mona a sa tsebe gore na o itoma malemo ntsa re. 
Rona Mona Freistad, Mekadisha Ushalusit. I'm not sure you were listening to the budget when it was presented. Ushalusit is a horror. Today, Free State, in a lady reserves, in a lady budget, a bed in Katu. Horror, how can I say, could you have a fika by fee? Rebel Lemu Hour Rai Carabel. Twelve and that it looked like Zibuna Mamezi in Capamutoba to Tabetu, one of our Tawanga to Baba trail, who say Puella fell into the Anquana. Bomas Pala is true. Bomas Pala Banal Matat. It is in the acknowledgement and volition of the African National Congress, led by Comrade Tut. Or Bomas Pala Banaba Free Start, Banal Matat. And about Tata Bomas Pala Baro are inherent. And that's why. Menier van Fire, asa asa ba tiribueka Jan van Ribe, and wazo wa asa ba tiribueka Jan van Ribe, is because mutako abizwan Tony Leon, kena atelendi, na untatu wa Tony Leon, ine ine judge casing ya kalush masang, kena asente siteng kalush masangu alofanyi wa abola, ba be banka kete or habamo bola e kamora sentence. Bamo Bea, who fit the sixth April. Now, the sixth April, Kilitz at Zillow, Jan van Riebeck, a fit link along South Africa. So, Bonaba celebrated Jan van Riebeck, Kaba Fania, Kalushima Sang. And that's why I saw the Ribuka Jan van Riebeck. Because Kimura and Wabona and Bamo celebrate every year against and with the lives of our people. We will remind you forever that, as you say, apartheid was not acceptable. You are just trying to grandstand, but in essence and internally, you represent it in any way you are. And that's why, that's why you want to claim that the ANC is not a caring organization. You don't know what caring is. Because if you do, you would appreciate that every person is equal before the law. You will appreciate that se fatlo sa modimo ka o fela ra tswana re hema moyo o tswanang re na le madi a magobedi ka o fela ra a swa ka o fela ra katelwa ha ona hore magwa a swa bete ro feta batho ba batho now you don't appreciate that hence you ill treat our people in the province you want to claim pride about in western cape you don't care about people of ilanga you don't care about people of kuguletu you don't care about people of michel's play you only care about people in suburbs because you would appreciate the money invested into you to sideline our people. And that's why they don't grow. So you would not appreciate what is happening in South Africa today because, you know, you were not schooled in what I call historical materialism. You are failing to appreciate the platform. You are coming here to campaign for votes when we must explain to our people how government works. You're missing the point. You are crying at a wrong funeral. You are representing issues that are not relevant here. Because you don't have what I call time and space. You have a space, oh, yeah. but you have a wrong time. You, you are presenting in a space a wrong element because you can't comprehend. Or the platform you are in, you must account for something else. So you must appreciate that. In terms of growing the economy, you need at least three basic elements. You need to appreciate the history of where we come from. That's very significant in terms of growing the economy. You need to appreciate the culture of the nation because culture enhances how the nation grows and in turn enhances how your economy is moving forward. You must appreciate the material conditions, what prevails, what gives into the nation at that particular time, what conditions you operate under, whether you are, the climate conditions are conducive for you to take interim or strategic measures to move forward. So you would not know that. You are not schooled in historical materialism. So that's why you are, print, you are, you are pitching a relevant and irrelevant subject at a, different, at a different platform. But we are saying to you, MEC, we appreciate the work that you are doing. We are excited about you having to lead this department to ensure that the people of the free state achieve more and the ANC is giving you this mandate with respect, with dignity. And they know you will execute it uh, responsibly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Chief Whip. Honorable MEC Khadija Brandt, you may reply to the debate.
Honorable Deputy Speaker, our young representative of the National Council of Provinces, all national members of parliament, I stand on the protocol observed earlier. During this debate, Honorable Deputy Speaker, I'd just like to attend to two or three critical aspects. Honorable Kluter, in the speech, we absolutely outline that due to the economic challenges which we are all experiencing, not only in the country but across the globe, our tax base in this country is a challenge, more so in our local municipalities. And it is therefore that we have increased the budget of MFM, which I thought I was articulate enough to showcase that we are prioritizing our local government and we, we agree that we have to provide the necessary support. But I'm also calling on you and all counterparts, as we deal with councils, our goal and our aim must be for the citizens of that local government, not for a political party and the ideology of a specific political party. So it is, the onus is upon all of us to work together and fix the tax base issues within our municipalities so that we can deal with the financial health in our municipalities and we can support a, a revenue stream and deal with our budget appropriately in order to invest and, in, and, and ensure that economic development happens within those municipalities. Furthermore, it is this ANC government, Honorable Deputy Speaker, that developed an economic recovery program. It is this ANC government that developed a position on debt relief. It is this ANC government that cares about its citizens and is saying, you taxpayers, you haven't paid that municipality, but let's deal with these historic issues. Let's start over and start working towards a progressive future for our people living in those rural areas. Why can you not support that? Honorable Kluter. To, to the matters Honorable Van Fieren raised, let's start with Parliament to the People. Parliament to the People is the mandate of this provincial legislature. It is this legislature where laws are passed and where important issues of the day is discussed and decided upon. It is this place where the views of the citizens can be heard directly by either committees or other functions of parliament. We, it also keeps this executive accountable to the people of the province. You elected us. It is up to you and for you to keep us accountable, right? But I think the DA opposes bringing parliament to the people because they do not want the citizens of the province to hear and know about the good work that this ANC government is doing in this province. The improvements that were noted clearly in the speech, four improvements in the provincial government, two improvements in municipalities, shows that is detailed impetus on making sure that we change the face of this government. And with other big goals by various departments, I can tell you it will be achieved. With the political will and the support from all of us in this room, it will be achieved. And Honorable Van Fieren, I can assure you, MEC Manj, if she is able to pick up maladministration or any of these other executives, we know what to do. We know exactly what to do. And it is because of what our own ANC officials did, supported what it was that you thought you led during some of, of the cases that you opened. And, Honourable Deputy Speaker, it's imperative that we go back to research. It is imperative that we, we understand the past. The University of Pretoria states that during the apartheid budgeting system, it was extremely secretive. No open formula was developed during the time. There was direct impetus on skewed economies, specifically funding towards industries and monopolies, and these are the same industries and monopolies that are controlling South Africa today in terms of wealth. 
It is still due to the apartheid government and financing that we are the number one unequal country in the world with the top 10% of the wealthy in this country that holds 80% of the country's wealth. But in fact, it's not just an issue here in South Africa, it's the state of the world where the richest 1% grabs nearly two thirds of all new wealth worth 42 trillion rand created since 2020. And of course you will defend it, Honorable Van Fieren. It is part of your policies and largely derived from the policy on modern capitalist principles. Indeed, we have to go back to our past because it is defined in our blood, black, green, and gold, to take everyone with us, build a nation that is inclusive, a nation through our democratic and our national democratic revolution. And if you can't accept that we want to build a prosperous South Africa with everybody included in it, we will walk and we'll follow this path and we'll do it with or without you. I spoke about our plan on energy and that energy assessment, we reiterated it here today. But we also spoke about it during the State of the Province Address, as the Premier outlined it. We also spoke about it on the provincial budget, clearly bullet for bullet as to what this province is going to do. But unfortunately, of course, you're going to go back to Western Cape, and I'm going to go back to the research. In 2014, Western Cape raved about um, renewable energy. They went out, did a launch in February 2022, still haven't appointed. So what does that tell you about the, their ability to implement the city, of, the city of Cape Town? So I think that in terms of what we have to do, we are clear. We have an implementation plan. We know about our implementation plan and we will come report to our people through this parliament and taking it to every corner and every rural area of this province which you hasten to do. And Honorable Van Fieren, once again, you are instructing us to remain limited in our thinking. Are you saying that a black person cannot fly a plane? Why continue to limit us, Honorable Van Fieren? It is the posture of individuals who make these st statements on indoctrined ideology and stereotypes. As a province and within the ANC-led government, we saw a black, youthful woman become a pilot in Botsabelo. It is this ANC government where we will have women pilots who are flying fighter jets r alongside the president's jets. It is the ANC government who is empowering our young women in South Africa. So, Honorable Van Fieren, I think your campaign today to vote for a specific party has failed and you could tell by the response of this audience that it has failed. Thank you, Honorable Vusi Musi William Chabalala, on your issues on our budget to empower the economy and free status as a whole, women at large. Honorable Mutsidisi, Agnes Kaloi, your support towards empowering women, and women represent more than half of the provincial population. Research proves that women play a positive role towards increase in GDP, but it also reminds me of a G Georginia Taibos, who was arrested for not submitting to patriarchy, because this is what we are supposed to do, submit to patriarchy, like it is expected from us here today. But it is her, Georginia Taibos, that stood firm against oppression. And it is Weihook in Bloemfontein, it is Winburg, it is the jail in Kronstadt, it is the jail in Jagersfontein, that remains in the history books of our struggle as black women in this province. Don't go far, ladies and gentlemen. We will talk about that and continue to talk about it as we hand the baton over as young women to the future women leaders of this province. Honorable MEC Kathleen Dibulelo Mahlatsi, aka Dibulelo Manje. Indeed, Honorable MEC, we, you've acknowledged the global challenges. It is clear and, and you are very smart in the way you articulated that. But you're correct, MEC. We have to do what is best with the little budget that we have. We have to provide more impetus on youth within our province, within our department. We will support your department on CSD and tax training. And Honorable MEC, your knowledge and passion for knowledge-based informed decision-making is valued. And your role as the economic 
political chairperson will come in as many of our decisions that we make in these budgets will seek your endorsement across our executive uh, decision-making process to ensure that we implement and report to these people. Thank you, MEC Ngangisa, our Chief Whip. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for supporting this budget. Thank you very much, Honorable MEC Khadija Brown. The reply by the MEC concludes the debate on vote for Free State Provincial Treasure. Honorable members, may we proceed to motion three. The secretary shall read motion three. That the second reading debate on appropriation bill number two of 2023 be continued with vote one, Office of the Premier. The vote before the House is vote one. Premier, the Honorable Premier, Mr. Dukwana, you may address the House. Honorable Speaker of the Legislature, Deputy Speaker, Honorable Members of the Legislature, and uh, Executive Council, Mayors, Executive Mayors, and Speakers of Municipalities, specifically allow me, Deputy Speaker, to mention uh, the Honorable Speaker, uh, Mayor of uh, the District, Mayor Ndakumbani, uh, Ndakumbani the mayor of the executive mayor of Machabe and the Mbevu Kalipa, uh, also the speaker of uh, Machabe, who also happens to be the Salga president, Babu Chastofile. Let me take this opportunity to recognize uh, all members that are here, especially the leaders uh, of the national. Executive Committee of the ANC, Ubabu Pesane, Usbongile Pesane, who happens to be the NEC member, uh, the NWC member, and, the, uh, and also a leader in office uh, presidency, uh, presidency. The leaders uh, that are here, Ubabu Toki, Ubabu Reed, and all others, uh, the leader, Women's League Okoyo, uh, coordinator, the leader, those who dared the apartheid at the time. And now, Siti Ubaba, Upizana, Ngesi, Olida, Abelik Talabe Valerwe, Ngepesha, Detainees, Political Detainees, all of you, ladies and gentlemen, leaders of civil society organization, faith based organization, business community, Ubabu Dai Bosch, and others, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Speaker. It is my singular honor that I have been granted this opportunity to present my first budget vote speech as Free State Premier. I present this budget vote owed by the confidence of our people that, have de that they have demonstrated to us that we can serve them at this level of government. This year marks exactly 33 years since the release of Nelson Mandela, the founding father of our democracy. Nelson Mandela emerged from prison after 25 years in jail to remind us of the African spirit of Ubuntu. The 27th of April this year marked the 29th anniversary of South Africa's democratic elections. We are inspired by the mandate given to us by our voters to transform our society, this unjust society, and overcome all obstacles and achieve the vision of a united, free, non-racial, non-sexist, and prosperous free state in which the human of every citizen is upheld. Honorable Speaker, this budget vote is an important event after the state of the province uh, address where we, uh, where we take 
the people of our province into confidence about how we plan to utilize public resources pursuant to our mandate of building a better life for all. It gives us an opportunity to outline our planned priorities for the year ahead and solicit the blessings of the free state community in whose interest our government is enjoined to act. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14 says, and I quote, where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety and cold. This biblical injunction reminds us all that we must always seek counsel from the people whose electoral support put us into these positions of responsibility that we hold in government today. By far, this injunction coincides exactly with the old Sutu adage, Honourable Speaker, with your permission, I would like to dedicate this budget vote to the memory of the late Sipo Muti from Kutwano and uh, also to many men and women, sons and daughters of this province uh, who actually did, as I said, the apartheid and responded to the call by the then President Oliver Tambo to make South African governable. Amatela for the young lions. <coughs> Mr. Mutsi or Comrade Mutsi was brutally assaulted by the apartheid police at the age of 17 years, as a result of which he suffered brain damage, which took his life later on the 5th of May 1985. He belonged to the courageous, selfless, and bullet baiting uh, generation who made the ultimate sacrifice for us to enjoy the freedoms that made it possible for this gathering to be here as we are sitting today. The ANC and indeed the people of our province appreciate the role uh, played, uh, he played towards the realization of a free South Africa wherein all forms of oppressions are a distant memory. I would also like to summon the undying spirit of the former Beatrice, uh, Premier Beatrice Marshoff, the former Education MEC Tate Mahwe, the former Mayor Ngangelizwe uh, Sebenzile, all who passed on March and April, respectively, this year. We have no doubt that the love for the people of our province will guide our efforts towards realizing a truly prosperous uh, province. The birth of democracy signal the end of one era and the beginning of another. The ravages of racism and exclusion were fading. This was the moment of reawakening and the tide of history was turning. As the evil that was apartheid was crumbling, our story of courage was unfolding. We set ourselves on a path of democracy based on constitutionalism and equality. Nearly three decades later, these daring commitments still remain dear to our democratic journey. Today, we are a democracy founded on the values and principle of equality, human rights, non-racialism, and sexism, non-sexism. These are the values we ought to live by and tirelessly defend. Today is better than yesterday, and tomorrow will certainly be better than today. Our people have access to running water, electricity, dignified housing, free education, and access to professional jobs, which were previously a preserve of the few. And we acknowledge that there are mistakes, there are challenges that we must deal with and we must deal with this effectively uh, and make sure that we give our people, all of them, these benefits. Despite these successes, the road ahead is still filled with challenges. Unemployment, poverty, and inequality continue to mar our achievements. Yesterday, we, the mayors, the two mayors, the district mayor, as well as the executive mayor of the, of the municipality, the chief whip, and uh, members of the executive council of the province met with uh, uh, international students uh, who are unemployed. And uh, whilst we wanted to really engage with all these issues, what disturbed us mostly was that we had a hall full of 
young people with skills and armed with all knowledge, but uh, they were unemployed. We need to change this. We need to change this uh, situation in the province, and all of us must actually be working in our sleep and making sure that we do everything in our power to turn this situation around. And of course, we cannot lie to any of these young people and tell them that we will, we will appoint them all. We will not do that, but we will actually create an environment that is conducive for them to realize their best uh, uh, lives. And this is what we're going to do as a province. Uh, and I will outline later some of the issues that we would uh, like to do to really create a situation that is conducive for growth, for development, and for these young ones to realize their potential. The other group that we met was the creative uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, arts uh, people, uh, the sector, and they articulated clearly what, they, what they've gone through, what they are going through, and their sufferings. And we made a commitment to have a summit that will deal with these issues and, and start a process that will see this creative uh, sector realizing its full potential in the province. As a country, we cannot ignore the quality and the, of our creative arts, the quality of what God has given to our, many of our children and many of our young people. We must use that to also open doors for other opportunities in terms of development. If you kill creative uh, uh, arts, you destroy innovation, and this province needs innovative uh, processes to solve some of the challenges that we have. Like episodes in our historic moment, we will never allow challenges to define our circumstances or extinguish our ability to dream. Instead, they should inspire us to imagine our province anew. Banabesu, we, we have gone lower. We have gone, we have gone bad. We have done things that are wrong. We have gone, uh, you know, the province has seen the West. And this is the only chance that is there for us is to go up. The only opportunity we have now, we can't go beyond what we have. We can't go lower than what we are now. The only opportunity that is there for us as the province is to rise, and this Phoenix will rise. This province will become the heartbeat of South Africa, and this province will demonstrate that it was a sleeping giant and that it needed to be awoken for South Africa to realize its full potential. This is the province that uh, borders six other provinces plus Lesotho. And we've got to do everything to ensure that this province gives life to South Africa. From the banks of the Orange and Val rivers, the majestic Drangasbeck mountain range and the silence of the Carib Plains, ours is a mandate to deliver and deliver now. Honorable Deputy Speaker, on, what, on focusing on what we need to deliver, when we deliver and how we deliver, is a strategic leadership function of the office of the premier. This office is the nerve center of the province, of the provincial government, and without the center, things will fall apart. So the center must and will hold. The office of the premier has a mandate of directing the integrated planning, coordination, governance, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation for the free state provincial government. The performance of this function, of this function, locates service delivery right in the office of the Premier. It is only when the centre is unwavering, purposeful, value-driven and visionary that it will lead the province towards good governance and improved service delivery. And this regard, in this regard, we are required to, we are, we are required to reinvent the future. And this is something we cannot uh, 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 give on. We will uh, ensure that we deliver on this challenge. We need to challenge the status quo. Regegera is that in Tojo Logao, Honzo Ezahala, 
we need to change. We need to embrace novelty and promote experimentation. We need to throw away the box that impedes our thinking and dwarfs our march towards innovation. This is how we will move mountains and circumvent conformity with old ways. We need to reimagine the free state as the artery and spine of the South African economy. For far too long, we have been preoccupied with competing with the other provinces. This ignores our role to harness the specific location benefit as well as the economic opportunities in various spheres of the economy. As we reimagine the free state, we are bound to deliver shared and inclusive growth across districts which are poised for growth and development because of our strategic location. The Free State offers South Africa a unique selling value proposition. The Free State shares borders, as I said, with six other provinces and the Mountain Kingdom of Lesotho. Five major national highways intersect the centrally located province, which is also well served by rail and air links. The Orange and Val Rivers define the southern, western, and northern borders of the Free State. The entry, the entry is South Africa's busiest road, and the highway junction truck has stopped at the entrance to Aerosmith, claims to be Africa's big, biggest. More than 1,500 vehicles pass through every day. This country's two great highways pass through the province. The entry links the ports of Richards Bay and Deben with the industrial heartland, and the N1 provides north-south connectivity. Three other national highways intersect the province, which is also well served by rail and airlines. The Free State produces significant proportions of South Africa's wheat, 30%, sunflowers, 45%, and maize, 45%. Links to the west, Kimberley and Namibia, and east, Lesotho, underpin the planning behind the N8 corridor concept, which covers Bloemfontein, Butabelo, and Tabanju. Our districts are not only diverse, but each boasts a veritable host of unique economic opportunities. Firstly, Dabi is an important agricultural production area, plus also our manufacturing. And we will be uh, in, uh, announcing very soon the development of uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, innovation that is to come uh, in, the, in, in South Africa, working with the, uh, with the government of uh, Haute. We will make that announcement when the time arrives. The Lijue Liputua district boasts gold fields and agriculture potential. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. We must not make a mistake we did with the gold that we have and many others. With the discovery of helium and gas in this area, we must change this area. It must become the gas hub and helium hub of South Africa. Mangao Metropolitan Municipality, the trade and administrative hub of the province. Tabo Mufisanyana District is an, an unrivaled tourism destination. Harib District boasts farming and many other opportunities we will be announcing very soon, working with uh, other countries. Most districts now offer exceptional possibilities for mining with different mineral deposits being discovered daily. Another area that must never escape our psych is opportunities that could flow from revitalization of old mining towns in the province. <coughs> Sorry. Honorable Speaker. The last time it was the Deputy Speaker. <laughs> Democracy can only thrive when we are effective, transparent, and accountable to the people. After all, we serve at the behest of the people. We are guardians of their dreams and messengers of their voices and their hopes. Ensuring effective and efficient government, seamless government and resource allocation and management is the function of Program 1. In overseeing the performance of the provincial government, the Director General will drive integrated planning, coordination, implementation, and monitoring of government projects and, uh, and programs. Beyond ensuring functional and coherent government delivery machinery, this role includes serving as secretary to the Executive Council. 
This responsibility appreciates the value of mutually reinforcing policy objectives and desired outcomes. Between the three spheres of government as a precondition for successful integrated service delivery. Moving forward, we will improve efforts to enhance institutional relationships to create synergy built on integration, coordination, and partnership. This will lessen policy incompatibilities and fragmentation. Engagement with structures such as the President's Coordinating Council, Premier's Coordinating Forum, and Forum of South African Director General and medium for policy dialogue, knowledge sharing, and collaboration in support of our priorities will be regularized. External structures will also be engaged to serve as a bridge between government and the public in enhancing a common vision and action. This requires the provision of effective technical, administrative, and advisory support to the Premier and the Executive Council. To effectively execute, as a, execute, execute execute this function, more attention will be given to the measures that ensure increased flexibility, are results oriented and improved service quality through the use, thank you, of new technologies. The medium-term strategy framework priorities and Executive Council Mahota resolutions will continue to shape every aspect of the work of our clusters to drive integrated alignment and implementation. This year, our clusters will be revisited to mirror government structures, structural arrangement and priorities. Focus will be on the functionality to foster integrated planning and accountability between the three spheres. Honorable Speaker, the corruption that characterized many years of state capture sought to reverse the gains we have made as a province it overshadowed our capacity to do good and created a spiritual, moral, and ethical dilemma for our people. And we will make sure that uh, justice for Batubano, justice here Then I get the papers to say, Rona Kaufela, Kamelian, Odi Toba. Mere di Shole, Gana Kotoche. We draw courage and lessons from Muta Tamatiba that the human spirit, <clears throat> that the human spirit cannot and cannot be defeated by evil. These are the trying times of austerity measures. Doing more with less will now be the, be the new normal, not only this year, but year after year. Every rent we spend will count. Reallocation of funds to more pressing needs will be prioritized. Sound financial management will be the norm. We reiterate our intention to obtain an unqualified audit opinion as our commitment to sound financial management. Days of financial wastage excess and transgressions are over. We remain thankful for the support of the Auditor General in assisting the Department to achieve this. We are now implementing the audit action plans in our quest, in our quest for an unqualified audit opinion. The Center will lead by example. Our people deserve no less than this. Besides accountability, financial management is also about the fight against malfeasance and corruption in government. Corruption is not a victimless crime. It defers hopes and dreams of our people. It erodes trust and confidence in the provincial government. Corruption is not, uh, it cannot take, it takes away from the poor all the time. The people of our province lo loathe corruption. Most of them always say, the Premier, Basa 
e maspaleng ba iswa maspaleng o mo ba sa tlosi provinceng department ba iswa department e nyongwe ha ba sentse ba tlameile ba tloswe ba tlameile ba lelekiswe ba tlameile ba koswe re ke ke ra dula le batho ba sa ikemisetsang o sebeletsa sechaba re ke ke ra dula le batho ba sebeletsa muso emba ka mona ba ikentse ba bora khwebo ha o batla o bora khwebo ya khwebo ga o batla o sebeletsa muso e ba muso re tlameile o etsa bonete ba hore di province di public servants tsa rona di a tseba role ya bona ko seva secha e mo lemong ya kenang public service o tlameile ho tseba hore o ke ke wa ba morui o sebeletsa secha me ha o batla o ba morui tsa mong ka di chance tsa mong ka ka o fela tseng kuang eh ke ba to ba khwebo banka di risk tsa mong ka di risk se ka dula o khola o sanke risk ka mona e bontso e tsa competition le batho banka ni risk ba sa tsebe gore chalete ya bona ya mogolo e tla tlanene o bane le tsa ntho tsena le rona re destroy the business e ha re tlamelo ba patala ka nako be re sa ba patala be ntse re kopa ditie le lona bo ra khwebo fedisang o ba batho ba ratang ho etsetsa ba bang di favor ka o ba fa ditie ba khola batho bana ha o na tie o tlamelo motho a ifumane a sebeletsa muso ha i thekele tie ya hai Members of the public, please let us not. The reason we are here as a province is because of the corruption which was normalized. We cannot allow this to go any further. As I said, we have reached our lowest. We cannot reach any lower. We cannot go any lower than this. You can hear that these, these people see the free state as their heritage and are willing to guard it. Here and now we pledge that there shall be zero tolerance for acts of malfeasance and corruption. Neither shall cover-ups be permitted. No one will be spared in this fight. This is not just rhetoric. Our government has started cleaning the road. As we deliver this budget vote today, architects of state capture in our province are appearing before courts to answer for the sins they committed against the people of the free state. Those who see on public resources meant to eradicate asbestos roofs, whose toxicity kill our people on a daily basis, believe themselves to be too powerful that they never envisage that a day such as this will come when they will have to answer for their heinous crimes. Those who aided their looting jamboree and are still in government must know we are coming for them the purposeful dance, the vetting of all senior managers and officials responsible for financial management by the South African Security Agency is underway. This will instill professionalism, trust and integrity in those entrusted with the responsibility of managing public funds in government. We also know that it le if left unchecked, conflict of interest is another enabler of corruption. The department is working closely with the Public Service Commission to ensure that there is maximum compliance with financial disclosure framework. Most importantly, lifestyle audits are now compulsory for public servants and government officials are barred from doing business with the state. We will maintain the highest standard of ethical conduct and integrity. Some of the reported cases of corruption and maladministration are now serving before the courts and others are under investigation. Honorable Speaker, this year we will bolster the provincial government security measures through implementation of innovative ways. Access control system will be installed, CCTV camera, cameras upgraded and expanded, X-ray technology used, custom software developed, and drone technology piloted to improve physical and cyber security. Institutional risks that may hamper the attainment of our priorities are mitigated as part of our early warning risk management processes. Every year, risks are identified and risk management plan and strategies are implemented with the assistance of the Risk Management Committee. Oversight of financial reporting, internal control audits, risk management, ethics disclosures, and fraud prevention will continue to remain the responsibility 
of our independent shared audit committee. To successfully fulfill this responsibility, Program 1 has been allocated a total budget of 108 million for the 2023-24 financial year. Honorable Speaker, developmental state will remain a distant dream without the necessary capacity. In fact, an end in service delivery protest, maladministration, and socioeconomic maladies are the end products of lack of capacity. The role of Program 2 is to build the necessary institutional capacity to ensure effective, efficient, responsive, trustworthy, and accountable government. This is about creating and supporting the environment, institutions, and processes which are important for the growth and development of our province. It is only through skills development that we will be able to address challenges of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. And our investment in education is our commitment to break down the barriers of growth to growth development and opportunities. To show how serious we are about education, the Free State Training and Development Institute have provided training to 2,000 officials on 119 courses and 37 part-time bursaries were awarded to officials. Partnerships are also an important source of our education investment. Of the 50 officials enrolled for the National Diploma in Public Administration, 29 officials have obtained their qualifications through the recognition of prior learning program funded by uh, PSE, uh, uh, PSE TA. We work with the National School of Government to promote training to 165 interns and 350 officials on various financial and leadership programs that include citizen-centered service delivery, supply chain management, and program and project management. Currently, 115 officials have been enrolled for National Diploma in Public Administration, NQF Level 6. Further, 20 officials will be registered for the Ad Advanced Diploma in Public Administration, NQ Level 7. Honorable Speaker, our Bazaar program continues to unlock the doors of learning for many young people to learn, grow, and thrive. This is what we are about. Inter internationally, we have 20 bursaries holders in universities in Portugal and two universities in Turkey. Locally, we are supporting 570 bursaries in institutions of higher learning. We also mobilized over 76 million from the manufacturing, engineering, and related service CETA, MERCITA, to settle the debt of 1,500 students at local TVET colleges and universities. All these initiatives from form part of our contribution to the National Skills Development Plan that seeks to ensure availability of adequate and appropriate skills that contribute to our growth and development. Embedded in the National Skills Development Plan is our, our human resource development strategy meant to develop institutional synergies and ignite a culture of lifelong learning in government. In our last financial year, the 50-50 gender parity outcomes at senior management levels and the overall 53% of women empowerment in the department were achieved. This is a demonstration of our resolve to protect and empower women. Indeed, no walls of gender inequality will endure under our watch. Honorable Speaker, knowing that the future belongs to the youth, efforts to make the public service an employer of choice for young people continues. As of March 2023, 17% of the total workforce in the department is youth. We must improve on this. Last year, we undertook an extensive review of organizational structure to reposition the department as an effective, efficient, and excellent center of government. Necessary consultation processes are underway to finalize and implement the reconfigured structure. Functions and skills will be aligned. Professionalism and ethical conduct will be instilled. Officials will be motivated and a fulfilling organizational culture created. And this we will, be, will be done in consultation with all involved. We are assisting all departments to, to repurpose their structures to ensure that we are a service delivery, purpose led provincial government. Honorable Speaker, we fully embrace the new technologies and innovations as part of the enduring fourth industrial revolution wave sweeping across the globe. We'll explore the creation of a shared ICT services and infrastructure maximize, to maximize the use of technologies to improve 
efficiency and effectiveness. Alongside this, we will roll out the virtual private network, cloud services, and telephony system to optimize resources, processes, operations, and approaches using the transversal projects initiatives. Our legal services provision will entail rendering legal services and advice to the entire Free State Provincial Government. We have embarked on a three-year process to review provincial legislation to ensure alignment with policy mandates and relevant norms and standards. We will still support the man management of litigations against the provincial government, which includes curbing of opportunistic legal claims. Equally, we will strengthen participatory democracy through communication. People deserve to know what their government is doing, and government needs to listen to people's experiences of democracy. That is why we are servants of the people and merchants of their hopes. Information, con information contest in various platforms, such as information, the content of information in this regard, my apologies, in various platforms, such as newsletters, radios, television, and social uh, media, will be driven by the needs of the communities. Therefore, a total budget of 293 million uh, has been allocated to Program 2 to meet its institutional development obligation. Honorable Speaker, integrated planning, alignment, and coordination is an appreciation of the fact that common problems require a common uh, approach. Not only is this a prerequisite for the whole of government uh, service delivery planning, budgeting, and implementation, but also for desired growth and development. Program 3 will align, integrate, and coordinate the activities of the three spheres of government uh, and make sure that a compatible and complementary development priority setting, coordination, and implementation takes place. Long-term planning and, and its inherent benefits to, re to reorder the development scape of the free state continues to be our utmost priorities. We are reviewing the free state growth and development strategy, which is embedded in the national development plan. This strategy articulates the province economic, social, and political landscape needed together in an integrated development web. Given that the strategy is a, a representation of the governance, of the convergence of views about the current and future development of the province, the review process will include widespread consultation with various social partners. Honorable Speaker, Successful realization of objectives of the free state growth and development strategies, which entail alignment with the economic reconstruction and recovery plan and national infrastructure plan, is predicated on the implementation of major infrastructure projects. Our roads, railway bridges, hospitals, and schools will breathe life into our economy and development, as well as growth and the well being of our citizens. We will turn the free state into a construction site. Real work has begun in this regard, and a brighter future awaits. The provincial government has now registered 25 major infrastructure projects with an estimated value of 173 billion rands with Infrastructure South Africa as part of the process to develop a viable project pipeline. We will not rest until this pipeline delivers uh, desired outcomes. We eagerly await the implementation of these roads, health, human settlements, water, and renewable energy infrastructure projects. Considering our location and the great potential it holds, we are serious when we say we want to center the free state as the bustling hub of economic activity, growth, and development for the country. We have set in motion processes with entities that include the Central Energy Fund and Petro SA, to explore how free state can be used as the country's energy generation, logistic, and beneficiation hub. We will also host an energy security in Daba to explore how we can contribute to the country's energy security, affordability, and stimulate economic growth and create desired jobs. We are strengthening our project and program management life cycle and the technical capacity in the department to oversee integrated provincial coordination of major infrastructure projects. Having multiple expertise in project planning, management, coordination, and reporting, this will propel our infrastructure investment 
to new heights. Honorable Speaker, implementation of district development model to enhance planning across three spheres of continues. We have appointed political champions for each district to focus on this critical area for intergovernmental planning coordination and monitoring. Using the DDM approach, we will widely consult with social partners to conclude the free state social compact for improved service delivery, economic growth and development. The social compact is our way of saying that we are because of the people. We put their needs and interests first in a framework that, dep that deepens the provincial government's cooperation and collaboration with them. Institutions of higher learning are an integral part of the free state landscape. We will therefore continue to work with these centers of knowledge production and drivers of growth and development. In solidifying our relationships, we will engage in conversation with students and management in this institution to share knowledge on how we can respond to growth and development priorities of the province. Honorable Speaker, in times like this, intergovernmental relations to drive integrated co coordination and implementation shaped by a common policy trust, shared commitments and mutual responsibility is important. We will forge policy interlinkages across the three spheres through platforms such as the President Coordinating Council, Premier's Coordinating Forum, Intergovernmental Relations. Come on, Suana, listen as they go fellow, Ring Gemunyat Lawana Lebua, Director General Officing, Kilebwe Office Chief of Staff, Office Senior Government, no, Kilebwe Mosadiwaga, Katia to Yoshe and Panyona, Tena Tosha, Kilebwe Gaufela, Kalebo. Honourable members, we proceed to the debate on Premier's presentation of the budget vote, and I will call Honourable M. C. Lieto to address the House. Honorable Speaker of the Legislature and your Deputy, the Honorable Premier, Honorable Members of the Executive Council and Members of the Legislature, the President of Salga, Councillor Stofile, the former President of Sanko, Ntate Taibosh, Executive Mayors, Mayors, Councillors and Speakers who are here, we are at Pelubantria Marena, Amakwisani Lemarena Oshe, the Director General, by Tapili Ba Mikhasho Yadi Politiki, Haholo Holo by Tapili, Ba Mukhasho On Nakizong Wano African National Congress, Kesompe Mudula Stulo Wakijine and Aljuel Puzo, Comrade Olile Toki, Kesompe Bome Lebontate, Ba Tenkwa Nokajeno Sichaba, Safri Stata, Banabesu Dumela. Honorable Speaker, it is indeed an honor and a privilege for me to take part in this debate after such an eloquent articulation by the Premier of the plan to restore the livelihoods and inspire hope to the people of the province. Congratulations, Honorable Premier, on your well delivered maiden budget vote speech, which inspires hope and cultivates a sense of belonging of the free stater. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier, for recognizing heroes and heroines of our struggle. If Jan van Riebeck did not land in South Africa in 1652, he was brutally killed, and Orhopota, because you are saying, Sichabasesa Tsebing Moses one thing, but you reminded us that as the African National Congress working together with our people, we know where we come from. And as the ANC, we support the Premier's budget vote for 2023-24 financial year. This speech gives a good account 
of the instruments that will drive the project of renewal of the capacity of the free state to deliver on the hopes and aspiration of its people. It articulates how well positioned the free state is in the national geographical landscape, as well as the inherent and tapped competitive edge that the free state naturally possesses. We have been talking about the centrality of the free state, but we have not taken advantage of it, and we are happy, Premier, that the new sheriff is in the house, and we are going to use our centrality to grow the economy of this province. Your speech reflects the critical milestone of renewal, re-energizing and repurposing the service delivery machinery of government to respond radically, faster, adequately and substantially to the changing landscape of the persistent challenges of unemployment, poverty and inequality that have sought to undermine the gains of our freedom and democracy. The path of renewal is not undoing the good that we have done under the banner of the glorious movement of our people for the past 29 years since the advent of freedom and democracy. It is about looking at the opportunistic elements that has derailed our efforts to change the plight of our people for the better and deliver on the grand promise of a better life. Like you spoke about corruption, because corruption is one of those uh, issues that derail service delivery to our people. And you have articulated very uh, uh, detailed that the African National Congress is not corrupt, but if individuals are corrupt, they must face the might of the law. Each and every person must answer for his or her own sins. The African National Congress did not send anyone to steal money from government. Thank you very much for reminding us, Premier. As I indicated, we shall not be moved by the persistent work of those that seek to unseat us from the levers of power, who are continuously telling us that we have not achieved. I agree with uh, what the Honorable Premier has already said, that as the, uh, as the end of the five-year electoral cycle draws to a close, we will still report on the implementation of the 2019-2024 medium-term strategic frameworks. Re Ba sebele tiba muso, ba kaban 2035, ba tu si tuwe kadi chelete, hore ba ntafa ze tibo ya bon. Hona jwa le ribuwa ka 4IR, hoble la hore, tamele rejule rente re ntafa za tibo, ya ba sebele tiba muso, hore ba khone hore, ba eze di tebele zo di yes chabe nka pili. Re alebuwa ka ma student ana e lungo free state, e ba file chelete, ka jeno lena re atiba hore, re nale, a 29-year-old specialist from Bloemfontein who studied renewable energy in Turkey. It was his birthday yesterday on the 4th of May 2023. He is currently working in the private sector, manufacturing batteries that can last longer, 40 hours during uh, power outrages. Banabaring, how na ntwege yetsa nga load shading, riguta ba nabagona gona, load shading hai li siyo, ritamele geze e. He is currently working in the private sector, 
uh, this, their, their company supplies renewable energy sources to industries that cannot afford to go without power, such as mines. Mr. Taule also signs approvals of certification of safety of those batteries. Musebe Tsuo, uno yetu afela kiba tuwa ba suwe yu, pelo 1994. Ba una ba fiki, the center shall hold. The center will hold because we are going to continue empowering our young people with those skills that we say are technical skills for them to be able to contribute towards the economic growth of this country. An 18-year-old Ntabiseng Majia from a Dwarf's Refir farm in Harib became part of the Banyana Banyana Golden Generation that won the Women Africa Cup of Nations in Morocco. This daughter of a farm worker never thought that she would become a great star, but school sports expose her talent to greater heights. There is more from where the are rare gemstones were, were cultivated from, and more of the achievements will be showcased in public media spaces. They are products of Langalibalele Dube, Thomas Mapikela, Charlotte Makaike, Lillian Goy, Albert Sisulu, Rahima Musi, Ruth First, Winnie Matikizela, and others. But we honor the only a stalwart or heroine that is still alive mess of the brain and the premier dedicated uh, the gender parity of 53 percent of senior management to these heroines who fought for the emancipation of women if they did not fight for emancipation of women today we will not have the 53 percent parity we want to say thank you very much a uh, premier honorable premier we congratulate you for being consistent in fighting corruption we are not ashamed as the African National Congress that it is only the ANC that is fighting the corruption. I hope that the opposition as they speak, they will one day call for an investigation of those who stole land from us because that's corruption at its best. Thank you for decisive action, for appointing champions of DGM because cooperation between the three spheres of government is very much important. There is no sphere of government that can be able to succeed working alone because the people that we serve are the same people. Thank you very much, Honorable Premier, for that. And we want to tell the people of the Free State that the sheriff, the new sheriff is in the house, the centre is going to hold, and your lives will be changed. Honorable Clute. Thank you, Speaker. I decided not to go into the particulars of the Premier's of a budget because much of what needs to be said has been said before. So yes, corruption may never be normal again, Premier, and that's in your hands. And yes, we still need to see the fruits of the service delivery integrated centres and task teams we are spending 25 million on. The 25 major uh, infrastructure projects, as well as the livestock audit and skills audit, at last, we welcome that. But I remember in his speech after being elected, the Premier urged parties to work together. And after the months, a few, uh, few weeks budget debates, I would argue this province has never been more divided. Let me tell you a story. Just after the Destia um, debate, I went outside to, well, breathe, and a young black man came to me and he said, I want some guidance, and he's got a, a glass manufacturing business and he wants to improve and expand. And I listened to him. Luther, tell the story through the speaker. In terms of the rules, you address the presiding officer. And as I listened to him, I decided to give Honorable Meku's number to him because he should work with that. And while I was looking for, my, for the number, he said to me, you know what, these people speak about apartheid. What they don't get is that we need each other. We need each other. That's how the problems will rise, Honorable Premier, through you, Speaker. 
And with all the constant racial remarks, racial blame, racial divisions that were sowed on this podium the past weeks, that young man could articulate better what any of the Premier's MECs and the rest of the ANC could. We need each other. Premier, and honourable led to, racial discourse fires the attacks and murders of farmers like we saw the past week not far from here. Om die waarheid te sê, wanneer die vrouwens van PIS praat oor swart ekonomische bemachtiging, het ek elke keer gesê, SCB bemachtig nie swart mense nie, net seker is word reik. Maar die premier verdedigd het, en gaan so ver om te sê, of om het vergelijk met die arm blanke vraagstuk. Premier, two, thing, two wrongs do not make a right. You can't argue race-based policies are wrong and then defend your own race-based policy. That's reinventing the wheel. Don't let the call for parties to work together be mere lip service. The fact is, that young man I spoke about knew more about what's needed to save this province than the ANC does. Ultimately, free staters, black and white, just want the free state to work. And we're going to need each other for that. Premier, thank you very much. Honorable MC Lizuha Matai. Honor Speaker, Honor Premier, Deputy Speaker, members of the legislature, mayors, speakers present here, Salga, our NEC member, Comrade Besani, ANC leadership from the province, the regions, ANC Women's League our Youth League and Alliance, our guests and community of the Free State and Legion Pusa. I greet you all. Honorable Speaker, uh, let me first raise uh, and respond to Ntate Twitter. Our emphasis are working together. That working together, Kibona Aisa Kalehlakorel African National Congress. The Kikupa or the Water working together. So I'm inviting you to join us on the programs of Let's Say. On our speaker, the 1994 democratic breakthrough provided an opportunity of combining the state power and the mass power to serve the interests of the people irrespective of class, color, and gender. As a country, we find ourselves on the journey that necessitates us to take a moment to awaken our four beers warrior spirit that paved the way for centuries for a just struggle. We remain committed to build a society that is non-sexist, non-racial, united, democratic, and prosperous South Africa. The current government has set out plans to create high-quality public service as indicated in your program two on our premier, which explicitly gives indicators on how effective, efficient, and responsive and accountable government should be achieved. In delivering state services to the public, good governance adoptions will advance human dignity and will enable services to be accessible by all, in particular majority of our people who were denied quality service by the old establishment. In efforts making public service a career of choice, your Office on our Premier has done well through Free State Training and Development Institute by providing training and bursary uh, awarding to the officials to, en to enhance their skills. This is done with the intention to attract highly skilled people and cultivating a sense of professionalism and aiming to achieve our developmental goals. University, 
a fa bana bana a bapatalla dikoloto e mpaletsa tsilena bona batho bana ba batlang sebetse mmo ha ba soka ba yema ba etsa statement ba re premier pele ya pele bana bana ba thotseng thuso yeo ha se ba bona ke bana ba rona ba ileng hore ba dikopo di mahetle so ho bona ha re next ntwe o yentseng yeo e mparona african national congress re ro tswele pelo no network e seng ka utlisa di investment tsa charity fela but so sense we invest in the future ya this country o bana bana ba ba tlotlola di results tsa bona ona jwana mi ona ka ntorena ha e bua e tsikletsa menye ke meng hape ka kopanelo le mafapha mang ho hlabola lo ntshetsa ba chapel ho ba le mananeo a dithipelo tse fapane ho ba no so ntse tumelano le mercita me le teng re pele ya pele bana re tlontsha di artisans re tlontsha bana ba bangata ba ileng hore ha ba ba tlo ya dikolontse di ba ba tla ho etsa mesebetsi ya matso ka yona program ene o sengwe ka di le premier ga le bo a holo premier ka mesebetsi wa ha o motle o bana o bontsha le ratola ho ba tsha me ke ba tla ho hopotsa fela re premier ka nako o no be wa mona batho ba la ba didietse me me didietsa ne o ya bona ke hona ba tla yetsa ka mora mosebetsi o no molo se o yentse the table of the budget by premier mkolisi duka and it is once more a confirmation that the uh, the people of free state have hope and confidence that the anc led government continues to carry their priorities and interests the anc led government is a government by the people for the people therefore we welcome the establishment of the citizen based monitoring forum that is aimed at including the free state people to partake in service delivery monitoring we welcome the commitment and determination by the office of the premier in resolving service delivery issues therefore we affirm our support to the establishing of integrated service delivery centers and the service delivery technical team that will that will be concluded this year on our speaker we will play our part as the anc and as a province towards building a merit based public service system which will make appointments in the public service solely based on competence and ethical dispos disposition in accordance with the national development plan additionally on our speaker our partnership with national school of government will ensure that the training given to officials help in solving complex service delivery problems on our members and on our speaker we must insist on suitably qualified individual within provincial government employing competent resourceful proficient and professional men and women will aid negative findings by auditor general madam speaker wa swabisa nako hore e be rena le batho ba ileng hore ha auditor general e a hlaisitse maikutlo e be ha ba thusi hore ba arabe dipotso hore na potso e negative ka pa e joint pa ba arabe ke bona ba etsa go bonte bo metlo yo teka mona ba nne ba re lwantse empa o re file tshepo ona ro premier hore o tlo monitora hore tlo sebetsa ka thata hore tsena tsohle di arabe le he within the time frame se tse kopueng madam speaker building a capable state requires personnel which is competent and trustworthy our people are looking for a capable and accountable government a government that is responsive to their needs we can no longer afford any excuses when our people are pouring into the streets demanding services government of the people by the people must unashamedly expose and reject those who are incompetent and lazy who care less about the cries and pleas of our people on our premier it is pleasing to hear people of the free state will be encouraged in their communities to be active citizen when policy formulation takes place and express their position on issues of importance to them as you rightly said people deserve to know what their government is doing and government needs to listen to people's experiences of democracy this is an affirmation that human rights values good governance restructurings of democratic institutions create ways for the public to participate in policy making either through formal institutions or informal consultations this also create mechanisms for the inclusion of multiple social groups in decision making processes on our speaker let me express your sentiments uh, premier and concur with you that free state provincial government has to be positioned into a different trajectory it is my firm belief that the, the people of free state deserve a working government 
it's, it's for this reason I say you dare not fail in your mission, Premier, to lead your, your people in a promised land. A better life for all should not just be a slogan, but a reality that our people can derive comfort and appreciation. One of our fundamental tasks is to push back the frontiers of maladministration and corruption. For us to uplift the living conditions of all the people of Free State, we have to intervene decisively. We must disrupt the system that delays the service to our people. Honourable Speaker, Free State has a potential to turn things around. As we turn things around under the stewardship and guidance of Honourable Premium Policy Dukwana, we'll need undivided support from the people of the Free State. Success and prosperity will never be delivered on the silver plate. All those who have made it in life can narrate their difficult stories, their difficult stories on how they've been able to build their wealth. For us to build a sound and a strong province, tough decisions must be negotiated. On our premier, the people of the province have entrusted you with a tough responsibility to hold their hands and dig them out of a dark pit of poverty, unemployment and underdevelopment. On the other hand, I want to urge you that even though things may look tough, my belief and conviction is that with all the willing hearts and minds, there are no problems that are insurmountable. On our Premier, you have inherited an administration which has a plethora of challenges. When you were inaugurated as a Premier of Free State, Make it let me borrow from one of the others which says, tough times never last, but tough people do. Close quote. Sometimes your leadership is going to be tested, Premier, and questioned at the same time. But by some, by some officials and those that you have given responsibility, do not be intimidated and shaken by, by them. Stand firm and demand accountability, Premier, from all of us without any fear or favor. I plead with you to be tough on corruption and incompetent officials. Our people have general uh, uh, patient with our government, have been generously patient with our government. All what they are asking for is delivery of service in their communities. On our premier, the district development model is one of the planning strategies that have been adopted by the government, which aim to promote well-coordinated operational plans between the three spheres of government. Its, object, its objective is to promote harmonized relations and cooperation, to have one aligned planning when it comes to delivery of service to the people. Those crucial ones such as budgeting and spending of the priorities, uh, on the priorities services. As we know that the three spheres of government are interrelated and interdependent. The district model therefore seeks to strengthen this cause. This is to champion the service of, uh, the service of delivery as the different levels of government work to, and work together in delivering those services. The appointments of political champions seeks to address this. But remember, Premier, when you believe in yourself, the people of the free state will believe in you. Teamwork, uh, Premier, Coming together is the beginning, but keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Those who are waiting to see your fall shall be disappointed in Jesus' name. Every tongue that is lifted to condemn you will go dumb. Every evil eye that is monitoring you for evil will 
for evil, it will go blind. I therefore support this budget and as the ANC Kuba Premier, we are behind you. Drive and then we support it. Thank you. Honorable MC Mukwena, thank you. Madam Speaker, Premier, uh, Honorable Members of the Legislature, our distinguished guest, Dumela. Uh, Madam Speaker, the South African problem is the problem of the majority, not the minority. It's a majority whose history is laced with humanization that ripped their dignity as a people. It's a history that condemned them to the most horrifying and brutal conditions a human being should never be put in. Naturally, our people fought back and eventually won their freedom. Upon attaining their freedom, we started to build a new reality for a black person in South Africa. For us, a dream is for a democratic government to continue building better realities compared to apartheid. This is for the better communities for humans to live in, this meant electricity, running water, street light, community clinics, hospitals, police stations, third roads, equal access to pensions, access to universities and proper publishing facilities, residential and farming land. We lived in Skola, Madam Zile and her people, with zero basic amenities and on the contrary, the resources of the country were being used to build a small white country for the minority while the majority had no services at all. The economy and the major infrastructure such as roads, ESCOM, rail, sewage were never built for the millions of Africans but served the few. In fact, we need to remind our friends as they talk about load shedding that they need to consult their own history books that they wrote about the crisis of power supply and load reduction of 1948 and 1953, the same severe power shortages and load shedding of 1948 and 1953, in fact, the first one was 1948 to, to 1975, and as well as the national rollout program and the targets we achieved as the ANC uh, from 1991, I mean from 1994 to 2014. It is important to for them to go and consult this history so that they can understand how we have to use the little to achieve for the majority. The democratic state inherited a country with a distorted and a broken foundations designed to serve the few, whilst the majority, who also lived in the same country, had nothing. This meant that the resources built for 5.1 million whites now had to be used and shared for all 43.2 million people in 1994. We are simply correcting the facts here and reminding you. To correct this, we had to temper with the comfort of the few in the interest of the majority. Premier, I agree that today is better than yesterday and tomorrow will even be better than today. Premier, a lived experience for Mutuemutsu is better than yesterday. And for this, I say, I say thank you to the ANC that you lead. Despite many challenges, some mistakes were committed. For us as black people, our lives have changed for the better. The free state as you know it today is completely different and changed from what it was in 1994. To achieve this, the country, to achieve this, we, to achieve this, excuse me, we had to change the country's developmental framework from a minority towards a developmental framework for the majority. The price for this was to slow the progress for the white leafy suburbs in order to leave the township, something that our opposition will never comprehend. The pressure to uplift the conditions of the majority placed tremendous strain on both the resources and the existing infrastructure the country had then. With the resources and infra infrastructure built for a mere 5 million privileged then, we had to cover additional 37 million excluded blacks. 
Madam Speaker, we have made progress for the majority. And indeed, black, a black person has a dignity today compared to where we come from. The march to build a new inclusive society is not easy. And in our case, has been met with resistance that seeks to undermine, change, and still preserve the apartheid reality. Baanya Pezi, Leba Tatapi Bangwana Tarienzo, Balika Maki Tuoso Likanyeza, Louis Keza Bahali Bansetso Pili, Aruna, Impabazi, Bahori, Kimaki Tolo, Ahasano Lutukulu, or Yachaba Sesizu. They stand here and tell you that the ANC has failed. But now they have a promised land in the Republic of Western Cape. This is the Western Cape that Zile said to black Africans that they are migrants when they came from the West, Eastern Cape to the Western Cape. That is their promised land that they're telling about. They shout out loud and say, vote ANC out of power. Rona DA will deliver paradise for you. Every day they stand here to tell us about the DA paradise. Well, let's debunk that myth. They tried Swart Kafar that mobilized white communities to vote for them in defense of white privilege, and this was led by Zile herself. They were defeated. They tried their still boy, my man, whom they hope will hoodwink Africans into believing they, are cha they have changed, but our people rejected them. They dumped him and brought back the madam from retirement to re entrench the racist DA of yesteryears because DA trusts no one. Even the fellow they hope will be president the next day, DA Zile does not trust. That is why she's there to babysit him. They also tried Mr. Dipem, Hemen Mashaban, Hemen Mashab, whom they thought will confuse our people to vote for him, and then went inside, hand the power over to them. When they realized this was not enough, they then co-opted the Red Berets who voted for DA in the metros. They are not here, they are always running away to account for the lies they tell our people. This self-declared vanguard of the people I'm sure Sankara Martin Libitin Watan of Anbay Pizza Calibizola High. Their recent strategy is now to tell our people that we have destroyed everything and failed to deliver better communities. Let's respond again. In 1994, our people had no electricity. Today they have. Our people, in contrast, our people in the Western Cape are ravaged by Mulawadi Paola, which you don't know, made them in Philippi and Langa, in the Republic of Western Cape. Here, our people have electricity. The ESCOM that we refer to, that was meant to supply power for the few, we used it to supply power for the majority. Libuaka Lord Shedi, Litozi, when we were arresting established white entities, including some multinationals that stole against our people in the constructions of Kusil and Mitupi. We are getting our money back. We are also chasing the rater who ran to uh, Germany. For the mess up he did, ESCOM, including the lies he told about the ANC. If he's telling the truth, he must come and answer and never run away. When kids in college are cramped into temporary structures, your so-called new building techniques we're building new schools for our kids. When you fight against the NHI, we've built new clinics, here Karamids. When ambulances struggle to reach our people in Langa, we're finishing two new clinics here in Tabon, one is in 2010, please go there. In fact, we visited a new clinic with the president last year here in Tabo. If that is not a better today than yesterday, I don't know then what you're expecting. But to Baruna Badula Kara Matwa Bafuenki Muswa ANC, Kika Horkatlin Squata Kempetseng at Takah Rufri State, Cape Town Nikamata Tabakin Sachava Saransu. As compared to before, black child doesn't have to eat from a dustbin and a dumping site as the democratic state is providing for the most vulnerable. Utwa Fela, Raile Mat, the stadium, the clinic, the Zelagara means. Renze Tenga at the Tedi Heke Kenya by the Etakara Cape Town. Ubi Malur Dumelor no Ridian Zelali Bonaga Masualu. Di Palo Palo Tangwana Motel Mosua Rute Lenka Tusua Musua ANC, Kete Pami. Today, first generation of academics is a common sight in many African families. Mender Van Viren, what difficulty for you to accept that there's a black pilot today that is qualified? Where I come from? There's a black pilot who's qualified and is a member of the ANC. He's a pilot not because of his membership, but because he learned. That's what the African National Congress has done. It's very difficult for you. Many of the shops today in our CBDs are owned by Batubaba Asu. Asibo Bas Boy like they were before 1994. Finally, to worry about the pizza vanguard party for the people. But they are always found on the side of those who oppose the people's cause. 
they always pretend to be true representatives of Baruna and Pasheba Misebeti Abon. One, they established because of their anger against those that they glorified in the ANC. Their formation had nothing to do with genuine grievances of our people. They cry out, they cry out loud about Palapal. Mara Matsuwa Bona Tetsi Di Khapa Le Madi Ama Kekwa VBS Kwa Limpopo. Mitsuwa Le Bona will never say it. In the Kuruleni, the PE, they support the DA to run municipalities in Tsebatsibaru. Compared to both of them, the ANC was the largest part. They are always on the side of those who are against the people. They lie and promise things that they will never do. In Parliament, they opposed the adoption to pass a bill expropriation without compensation. Yet they say to us they stand for, the, for our people. They insult the working class, scout away like the overalls when they live in opulence. They even oppose this budget in Barbara in Yet Evanabatarians. Without this budget, there's nothing we can do. They even lied in Paul Ru. We're waiting to see if they're going to deliver the things they lied about because that municipality is an ANC municipality. But Baborun, the ANC government has delivered. We have built schools, houses, clinics, created employment, brought dignity to a black person and changed the country from what it was. We continue to work. Yes, mistakes have been committed, and we are correcting that. We are on the side of the people, and our track record tells that story. The road we are driving on today was not there yesterday, but was built by the ANC. The work we have was created or made possible by the ANC. The school, the college, and university to attend was built or opened or transformed by the ANC. The life you lead, the place where you live, it was built and made possible by the ANC. The water you are drinking, including this side, the toilet you are flushing was made possible for the, by the ANC. Even the position you occupy as a black manager, that Van Fieren does not is not really happy about, in business or in any other institution, it was made possible for, by the organization of Tambo and Mandela. Even the opposition to criticize freely the government was made possible for, by the democracy we fought for. They will never oppose or criticize the then government before 1994. Our people be careful not to be deceived by the thieves, oppressors, and liars. Madam Speaker, in conclusion, the opposition stands here and says that we are speaking politics of race or racial politics. Everything a black person does, it is corruption. You become successful, you are corrupt. You become a manager or a pilot at SAA is because it's cater development, it's not because of your capabilities. Everything you do, they see race and they tell us about the only good thing is in the Western Cape, the meta capital of this country. They will never appreciate or accept anything unless it is white. This is in their genes, it is in their politics. We tell this story because we are sick and tired of them of lying. They've got no clue of where we come from, the life of a black person that they live. My grandmother had to be 84 before she could see a flashing toilet. I'm quite sure you were born in your house with a flashing toilet. That's what the apartheid did. This country you destroyed for many years. We are correcting it. You want to come here and pretend as if we can correct what you did in 100 years in a mere period of 28 years. You are wrong, my friends. We are dealing with the issues that we are tirelessly working on to make sure that we do not achieve true liberation. There's no single thing you will appreciate or accept or support that is being done by a black person. You remain a racist organization. In terms of your genes and your politics, you are an organization that will never accept any progress a black person made. In fact, you fail to tell the truth that throughout the world, we are the only organization whose former leaders are taken to task if they are perceived to have committed corruption or crime against the people. Nowhere else except in China and ourselves. We will never accept that thing. You fail to persecute apartheid corruption and murder. You have never said anything about it. Your own officials that you deploy as DA, don't lie, have recently been arrested, not because by your effort. The type of country you see is a country for the minority, not for the majority. And as a result, our people must never believe the dream you have, which will never become the truth. The ANC will run this country beyond 2024. And we'll come back and tell you here that what you stand for, it is not what the people of this country stand for. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Saiki Mukwena. Uh, Honorable Roy Jankelson may address the House.
Thank you, Honorable Deputy Speaker. Before I start, I just want to make a couple of comments. Firstly, I want to thank Honorable MEC Marquena through you, Honorable Speaker, for mentioning Pala Pala. It wasn't part of my speech, but it's good that he reminded us of that. Honorable Speaker, I also want to compliment the Premier. He has good taste in ties. Order, order, Honorable Members. Honorable Speaker, I'm wearing a blue tie because my blood is blue. I know the Premier is wearing a blue tie because he likes the color, and we will do something about the blue blood, Honorable Premier. Honorable Speaker, I also want to join Honorable, the Premier. I also Honorable want to. Honorable can you please pause? I see the hand here. Honorable Member. Honorable Speaker, the name is Mukwena, not Makwena. Honorable. Honorable Jankelson, Honorable Jankelson, continue that. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I also want to join the Honorable Premier in paying tribute to our former PM Premier who passed away tragically, Beatrice Marshoff. I knew her when I was leader of the opposition and had great respect for her as a Premier, and it was a sad day when she was removed by her party from that position. But I also want to use this opportunity, Honourable Deputy Speaker, to speak about someone else who we also lost, a patriotic citizen of this province, someone who worked in the office of Premier Marshoff. Now, I first met Nobi Ngumbani before 2004, when he approached me and he said, let us go across the province. I have resources from the Institute of Democracy and Electoral Assistance from the Free State. Let's go across the province and spread political tolerance. Let's teach political parties and organizations about democracy. And with our youthful optimism, that is what we did before 1994. And we were hoping for a better non-racial, non-sexist society and a better future for all South Africans and the Free State. And we kept in contact and after the State of the Nation address when I was traveling back from Parliament, we met at the airport. And during that meeting in 2005, he said to me, I have drafted a report, and this report is very important for this province. And I want you to also ensure that this report is dealt with in the legislature. Because already at that time, he knew that if this report could see the light of day, his life might be safer. But unfortunately, on a fateful day on 22 March 2005, while he was watching a film with his family, he went to answer a call from the door and he was shot cold-bloodedly and murdered in his house. And his family were blamed for it and they went through literally hell before they were acquitted and found that they weren't involved. And this is a very, very sad story. And I said that we traveled the length and breadth of the province spreading tolerance and explaining democracy. And Deputy Speaker, as we travel across the free state, the length and breadth of our province, we see our people still living in informal settlements, many without basic services. We see sewage running through houses, yards, and streets. We hear cries of despair from patients in queues at clinics and hospitals. We have to deal with the thirst of waterless communities. We experience the inconvenience and damage caused by dysfunctional roads, and we cannot miss the growing numbers of jobless people begging at our intersections. This is the real free state, not the one that politicians paint with verbal budget speech brushes in this house. This is the province and the situation in our province that Nobi Ngubani 
fought against. And this is what those who murdered him created for our province, Honorable Deputy Speaker. And we will support the Premier's attempts to fight the scourge of corruption and to improve the lives and livelihoods of all the people of the Free State. That at least we have in common through you, Deputy Speaker, to the Premier. Honorable Deputy Speaker, a successful provincial government that is concerned about the welfare of its people creates an environment for the prosperity of its citizens. Such a government would attempt to be a caring government and use innovative, modern ideas that improve the welfare of its people. A caring and innovative government creates an enabling environment that attracts investment, both local and foreign, that will grow the economy and create jobs and prosperity for its people. The office of the Premier is central in terms of ensuring not only policy direction, but also good services and legislative and financial compliance by all provincial government departments. The words of Dubai leader Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum are relevant in discussions about the role of politicians in government when he says, and I quote, a politician's job is to make the lives of people easier, to solve crises instead of creating them, and to build achievements instead of destroying them. He went on to say, and I quote again, there is only one measure for authentic leadership and political achievement, and that is the improvements we see in people's lives, not the speeches or plans, close quote. Deputy Speaker, any good government should do all it can to make it easy for investors to invest in their country or province by creating an environment that attracts investment, encourages entrepreneurship, and strives for governance excellence. A bad government creates administrative obstacles for investors and instead of creating an enabling environment, spends time and resources on developing reporting systems that measure statistics and not outcomes. These reports and statistics are used to baffle oversight institutions and create an illusion of delivery, accountability, and oversight while creatively wasting and abusing resources. The outcomes of government must be, must be measured by the conditions in which citizens work, play, and live. These conditions relate to a sound roads and transport infrastructure, access to reliable and safe water resources, reliable electricity without load shedding, functional sewage systems, useful skills-based education, quality health care, a clean and safe environment, and the availability of a, a variety of careers and jobs, especially for our young people. These outcomes guarantee real freedom, freedom that citizens can use as stepping stones in creating their own prosperity. Deputy Speaker, a good government is results driven, not reports driven. A good government will inform its oversight bodies, the democratically elected people's legislature, on its results in terms of real deliverables based on visible, on-the-ground achievements. Government is currently measured in terms of the numbers of targets on paper, many of which are of no real value to the people of the province and are no indication of real on-the-ground performance or delivery basically tick box exercises. And I know that all the members of the legislature who serves on, on, who serve on committees are frustrated by the system which we have. And it is a collective system. If we want to change it, we have to work together to change this. Deputy Speaker, the satisfaction of its citizens is unfortunately of no real interest to our current ANC-run government in the Free State, since their reports have no measurable indicators for customer satisfaction. 
customer satisfaction. The legislation that demands this type of reporting compliance from provincial government departments must be amended. The ANC government has further entrenched an old system that regards citizens as beneficiaries who should be grateful for the smallest of services at a maximum financial cost to taxpayers, while the biggest beneficiaries are often the tenderpreneurs and the Ikeda cronies. And the Premier has mentioned that, and we will support him in his fight against that. The DA's ready-to-govern approach in the Free State regards citizens as customers, as customers who should demand and receive value for money and quality services. We want to develop the people of the Free State into our customers who understand that their vote is an instrument and, yes, even a weapon through which to exercise their power over government. This understanding will empower them and ensure their freedom from poor services, poverty and corruption. The DA believes that the government performance must be measured in terms of the well-being, happiness and satisfaction of our customers, not beneficiaries, our customers, who are the residents of the people of the Free State Province. With this approach, doing the work of government is not something to be ashamed of because your customers despise you, but an honourable profession in which you are respected because you de deliver excellence and quality services and represent stability and security to happy citizens. The, the DA wants to bring the word civil back to the civil service. Many of the victims of poor services that are delivered by dysfunctional government and despondent civil service services are young people. Young people in this province struggle to get appointments to empower themselves with driving licenses and have to queue for hours to get identity documents and other basic essential services from government. Our population is getting younger, more demanding, and impatient with government. We are not facing a sudden Arab Spring in South Africa, but with a growing number of protests, it is clear that we have already entered a long and cold political and economic winter. Now you may ask, what is the DA's vision for an effective and efficient government in the province? A DA-run government in the Free State will ensure transparent and technologically smart systems of public management. We cannot enforce old models of government on a youthful population who have different views about the world around them and different expectations of government in a global, high-tech, virtual world. We must note in this era of globalization Governments will become more and more irrelevant as non-governmental organizations and corporations take over services previously developed by governments more effectively and more efficiently. Individuals are interacting on social media to create self-serving local, national and transnational networks. A modern government in the free state will outsource services to technologically driven, well-programmed artificial intelligence systems. These systems will be able to identify service delivery needs and false, faults in the system through active citizens, and then automatically contract individuals, companies and institutions to remedy these faults and problems. The same citizens will be empowered to evaluate the quality of services rendered through their smart devices, the cell phones, that determine the performance of service providers and their suitability for future contracts. Citizens must evaluate the work done through an app and inform the system whether the contractors have done their work and whether they deserve to be paid or not not officials. A DA-run government in the Free State will implement programs to develop human capital, 
Many government services in education, healthcare, social services, infrastructure, development and maintenance and other sectors require human interventions. It is for this reason that investment in human capital is crucial. Ongoing training and performance evaluation through customer-based surveys must be the basis for this. This should also be technologically driven with a electronic, to electronic customer based dashboard that is programmed to highlight excellence and identify areas of underachievement in government that will require interventions. The customers of government in the free state should be all the residents of the province. That is what the DA believes. A DA-run government in the Free State will transform government offices into civil servants, of civil servants into service delivery teams that are outcomes and results focused. Their well-being must be as important as those of their customers. Coordination between services delivered by service delivery teams in the Free State should be streamlined through online information technology systems. Honourable Speaker, the world-famous physicist who was also, dis also very disabled, Stephen Hawking, said, and I quote, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change, close quote. In our ever-changing world, every new generation and government has to deal with what we call the doubling curve. What is this? In 1900, human knowledge doubled approximately every 100 years. By the end of 1945, it had come down to 25 years. By 1982, it was 13 months. And it is said that today, knowledge doubling happens through the internet every 12 hours. The increase in knowledge is impacting in the fields of law, technology, and yes, also government. To be ahead of the curve, governments, organizations, and societies should be attempting to predict future advances, advances in all areas of their responsibility and developing adaptable systems of education that enable citizens, both young and old, to develop and adapt skills that they may need in a constantly evolving and changing future world. Managers of service delivery institutions, what we call governments, will have to develop ways of aligning their service delivery teams and centers to innovatively manage and adapt to the needs and expectation of a rapidly changing knowledge-based society. Honorable Deputy Speaker, these are some of the things that the DA believes need to be implemented in the free state if we are going to become the Dubai of South Africa. And I've heard some of the MEC speaking about the Free State becoming the Dubai of South Africa. We all want that. We all want our people to prosper. And we want to work together to ensure that this happens. Let us ensure that those people who died in the struggle, but also died post-struggle, like Nobi and Gobani, while he was trying to build a better free state on not forget, forgotten. Let us serve their memories by building this province together. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Honorable MSC Makume. Sorry, I see it's Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Deputy Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable Members, my colleagues in ESCO, Members of Parliament Legislature, Nkriya Marena, Lema Kuisan, DG and Heads of Departments, 
the Salga president, the hosting mayor, the leadership of the ANC, the Tebesani, leadership from the province, leadership from the regions, and other leaders from sectors of the society. Uh, the beautiful people of Free State. Let me start by clarifying some few things here raised by opposition leaders. Number one is that being an opposition does not take away the responsibility of aiding to the building of the country. That's the most important. The second thing is that in building you must know the steps that are involved. There has to be a foundation. And in this case, foundation has to be about what happened in the past. Why are we here? What is it that we are trying to resolve? That's the most basic question. Then the second question that we must respond to is, how then do we work together in resolving what we have agreed that this is what informed part of we have identified as the cause of the problem. And then the last one it will be, what does the future hold for all of us? The Premier has made a call, we have made a call, and this call was made long time ago even by our forefathers in Tate In 1955, our people converged in Cape Town, and they made a clarion call. They said that South Africa belongs to all those who live in it. So when that child, when that boy, when that young man came to you and says, we need each other, you are supposed to be truthful that these people are correct about talking about apartheid. Because before even the dawn of democracy, they have made a clarion call that this country belongs to all of us. So meaning that we have long needed each other. We have led this fight of trying to unite this country as the African National Congress. So it can be that when we need to correct the past, when we need to be truthful and honest about the past, we are now being told that we need each other. Needing each other also include telling each other the truth more so that we are able to resolve all the problems that are facing our country. So it can't be correct that we will want to ignore the fact that apartheid as a system has created massive inequalities in our society. So what we are dealing with today in the main are the causes of apartheid. But yes indeed, corruption has worsened the situation, or it is worsening the situation. But the main cause is the apartheid. If we are agreeing on that, then we are moving on the same breath. So, so the issue that we need each other, we need each other also on telling the truth. Because it's not painful to tell the truth. It's not painful to tell the people of this country that apartheid in 1976, on the 18th of November, was declared a crime against humanity. Not a crime against Africans. Not a crime against black people, a crime against humanity. It means it was also a crime against those who were perpetuating it by the United Nations. So you are part of the problem, you must be part of the solution. Don't fold your hands and say, we are not going to be involved because when you talk the truth, you don't want to hear that truth. That's the first thing. The, the second thing, you were supposed to have been honest to the young men that in 1976, when children in Soweto, in Langa, rise or rose against the apartheid education, when the government of the day wanted to declare Africans as the media of instruction in all subjects, and children were saying, Africans in its own is difficult. Why can't we also do it in our own languages? They were shot and killed. 
They were not doing anything. They were saying, we really want education, but in a very acceptable language that we can understand, just like yourself. They were killed just for telling that truth. So we can't today manage to sugarcoat what happened in the past. So every time when these children come to you and say, why are these people referring to apartheid? Tell them the truth that it took us 360 to disorganize Africans and blacks in this country. And it's only 28 years that they are trying to reorganize themselves. And the other thing is that we are not taking a collective responsibility as part and parcel of this, the citizen of this country. All what we do, we rubbish everything that they're trying to do. So that is why it is difficult for us to accept the issue of needing each other but not telling each other the truth. We need each other, but we must also tell each other the truth. And Dr. Jackson, honorable member, you visited informal settlements with Comrade Nubi. You saw what you saw. But you know, I have a question in my mind. Did you see any white family in those poverty areas? The answer is no. So what could have been the cause of that? So it can't be corruption. Because if it was corruption, you would have even found white people there. So it was something that was designed by apartheid. Apartheid designed that they denied our people a shelter. That is why in 1955, our people said there has to be houses, security, and comfort. That was a demand. So you will never find those people of your color in those areas because it was by design that our people must live in those areas. So what we are trying to do is to resolve those problems that were caused by yourselves. There's also, there's also a different... Last time I heard Honorable Mekos talking about Karl Marx. You said you are the teacher of Karl Marx. There's a difference between the market system and the human system. Government is interested at the human system. Customers are people who have the capacity to pay for any services. In this country, the majority of people, because we have created conditions that did not make them to access opportunities, one, access opportunity to education, two, access education, I mean, access to job opportunities. Because in the olden days, apartheid used to have what they call job reservations for whites only. So our people did not have chance to get jobs. They did not also have chance to take their children to their schools, to other higher institutions of learning. Now, you can't expect that all in the broader society will be customers. We've got human beings that the human system must save. That is why we're introducing things that are making it easy for them to accept the system. Yes, indeed, there are people who are incompetent in government, we must deal with that. There are people who are corrupt, we must deal with that. But we can't introduce a market system in a government system that is supposed to be human. So that is how we see our people. We see our people as human beings because we know that some can't afford to pay for services because of what happened to them in the past. We serve the people. The other thing that we need to, to do, Honorable Jankul Singh, we should not just come here and talk without listening to what was said. The Premier said, and I quote, the role of Program 2 is to build the necessary institutional capacity to ensure effective, efficient, responsive, trustworthy, transparent and accountable government. That's the main and the role of program two. You come and stand here and say, the DA government will do the same thing. So you're not here when the premier was referring to this thing. So you're not saying how we must do. You say, this is what we are going to do. The premier is saying, Honorable there's a role MC, in terms of program two that is supposed to Honorable happen. MC, please address the, the presiding officer. Sorry, sorry, because sorry. now we are creating a situation whereby the member wants to respond and Thank then you. we'll end up with a dialogue. 
Thank you. Thank you. So, Premier, we are welcoming your budget because it has reflected on many reasons why it should be supported. Number one, it is intending on building of an unracial, non-sexist democratic society. Number two, it is accepted because it is intending at ensuring that those who are homeless are being sheltered. Number three, it is aimed at ensuring that our people get clean water and sanitation. It is aimed at ensuring that all children enjoy their rights and women are safely protected and are being treated as equal citizens. It is supported because it is aimed at ensuring that the patients at the hospitals and clinics get the best treatments. It is supported, Premier, because it is aimed at ensuring that we build the safety networks for the farmers and the farm workers. It is indeed supported because it is aimed at ensuring that it deepens democracy, accountability and transparency. As it was envisaged by our people in 1955, that South Africa belongs to all those who live in it, black and white. It is indeed supported because it is ensuring that we enter into a social compact, something that the opposition has missed when you are calling for the social compact. Social compact to us, it means all hands on deck, including the opposition and the private sector. It is also encouraging that we have set a how part. Number one, we are introducing the skills audit. Indeed, all departments are expected to enter into this practice of ensuring that there are people who are correct and who have the required skills in the right positions. The other most important thing which also adds to the fight against corruption is the whole issue of the lifestyle audit that we have promoted. We have also put an emphatic or emphasis on the ethical and servant leadership. We have also ensured that you are going to see to it that all departments are must and they should get the clean audit. This will ensure that our people get the services. Honorable Premier, let me assure you, you have our support. You are like a man who has been given a wheelbarrow and a spoon and a spade to fill in a hole deeper than the ocean. Don't be discouraged. You have in this province men and women who are ready to help you to build this country genuinely to ensure that you reach all the goals that have been entrusted to yourself by the African National Congress. Go out there with your team, proud that the people of this province will forever support you. Ensure that we win over the opposition to know that being opposition also means being responsible. They should know that the test of time is actually being tested on the ground when we do the work. As uh, MEC McQueen has invited them, we are also joining the MEC to make this clarion call. Let's all put our hands on deck to build a better free state. Let us not come here and talk things that we know that should we be in the positions of authority, still will not manage to do them. Let's do with the little that we have to serve our people. Thank you. Thank you. The Honorable Premier may now reply. Thank you, <clears throat> Honorable Speaker. And thanks uh, to all members of the legislature who participated in the debate. Sitting down there, I'm reminded. I'm, I'm going to, I know Uba Wistofila would not like this, but in general, I'm going to this. This is our illustrator in 20 and that's what we need. Honorable members, in Proverbs 11, uh, verse 9, it says, Evil ways destroy one's friends. Wise discernment rescues the godly. 
And I want you to remember that <clears throat> a lot. But I want also, as I'm going to respond in all this, to go to the Second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. I'm just saying all of us, <clears throat> the key word in, in this is that we need to have the discernment to understand what is expected of us as leaders and as members of the community. We also need to understand that if we are not going to turn away from all our wicked ways, we can say all the good things, we can talk all the good things, but we will not achieve anything. What is needed in the province and what is needed in South Africa is all of us working together and contributing in building a better province. All of us leaving our wickedness, selfishness, thinking that you are the one who deserve, others do not deserve. All our people want to live a life that they will be able to bring their children up and make sure that their families are safe and make sure that they can provide for their families. But we cannot do these things if all the time when tenders are issues, when work is given, we've got people who would only do this to fill their pockets and destroy what we are trying to build. And at the end, nothing is built. We must go and make sure, as the MECs have said throughout, when we were dealing with all these debates, what is left now? is for us to understand there are men and women out there who want to help build a better province, who always knock in our own our offices trying to say, I have something that can help it, that can help you deal with this. But most of the time we turn our, our ears away from this. We don't want to hear these people. And I applaud all my colleagues here that this is time that we leave politically, that we do what we have to do, what the ANC asks of us to do, serve the people, serve these people honestly, and serve our people with humility, and do what we know we can do. And I know we can do this thing. All we have to do is to let go of selfishness. Be selfless servant of the people. And I know we are capable of doing this. And I also ask of the opposition. It is good to play an opposition uh, a part, but it is also very useful to help build the country. We are in this together. You can always punch the holes, but when we sink, we all sink. So it is important for all of us to hold hands and build a province that we all will be proud of. We can all heckle one another. We can all say all the nasty things against each other. But at the end of it all, we need to build the province that our people need and desire. <laughs> It is the ANC that will say, a caring organization that will look at this thing and say it is wrong. Our people cannot live and more situation in Sechenana. And this we can do. And I believe that the colleagues that we have, 
putting everything aside. They are ready to tackle this. We are ready to build a province that all of us wish for. We ask all people, the people of the province of Free State, are saying, Marona. <laughs> By the Pele Barona, Harry Telepeles Chabasarona, Kabui Pitello, Kabui Coco Beso, Legat Ocean Terran and Leson, Lelona Borsha Babua Web, Agilet in Toka, Sebelet and Chele de Emuli Emui, Segale Gang of Fan of Mana Mineta, Eolesa Deservi, Mehal Teta, Lesa Sevi, Se Chabasarona, Rea Rokua. Kami sebeti e foko la ngele yeta. Rea rwa kuwa, kateo lidi kona asete lidi kata ang, hale kamele le yete mi sebeti. Oke ke wafa moto mo sebeti wa ore, ake nye di paipi, sa di kwere kwere, hao kaeta wosa yete ntwe no, hare to fumana, refumana ore, di paipi zene hadi ake nyo uchikile fela, hao kaeta uke nyate pedi ubo katela, batu barona ba flasha, Manta Hutela Gatu. Ndozena Gaufela, Disheba Orona Ape. Rekegera Dula Resheba na Lebato. Baoreba Fili Musebeti Gats Hepo Aure. Baateba Musebeti Wabot. How said Rahuebo to a business? Let's allow those who are business people to do what they are doing. Seganga Munya Taubale La Tala. Obotova Tauba Rahuebo. Impote Baore. How Rahuebo. To a Musebeti Wahuebo. Oba Bauteba. Baye se mo sebetsi wa bona le rona re thuse batho bana bana le bokgoni ba ka fetola maemo a rona mona ha re atla o tlo fana ka tshelete metswalle o re metswalle a rona e tle gone go iketsetsa menate e etse dipati re mona o seva sechha me ke ntwe re tlo yetsang ke se o re ikaneng o sietsa ke se o bommele bontate ba nkileng kano Barata Sieza, Memo Sebetua Rona Rele Officia Premier, Redo Kamea Reshebo Bonete Baore, Mosebeti Wa Peta Hala, Sose Diaeta Hala, Seke Badang was each of Fela Gore, Retame Lo Hutelas Chabe, Retame Ile Uhutela Morao, Reshebe Meta Maoya Rona, More Fosisin Ting, Recopes Farello, More Etem Poso Ting, Riete Hante Rilukise. Ore re tle re tsinke ho twa hona jwa lo ya pele re tshwarane ka matso ho o yetsa dintho tse tla gahlang mmupi wa rona le bothe ba lebeletse tse ntle ho rona ha re khutlele morao sechaba sa Yesu ha re khutlele morao ha ke re re embane ke go potsa fela ke ya o conscience ya lona hore le lona botsotsi ha bo patale botsotsi bo bola ile sechaba sa Yesu tse le sa dietseng tsele tla melodi etsa di re khutsetsa morao ka maghetlo a mangata re ke ke rang ka ditepetse pedi o ya pele be le reng kisa ditepetse tharo khutela morao ha re tswele pele ka ho ka se o ke rolo na ka o fela re lo sebetsa me re ke mseditse o sebeletsa sechaba me re tla se sebeletsa ka o tshepahala le ka tsohle tse re nang le tsona o aha afrika borwa le province ye matla Free state will never be the same. Thank you, Honorable Premier. Um, the reply by the Honorable Premier concludes the debates on vote one, the office of the Premier. Now we proceed to motion four, and the Secretary shall read the motion. That leave be granted for the second and third reading of the appropriation bill number two of 2023. The Honorable MEC for Finance, Honorable MEC Brown, Speaker Anu, 
Any discussion? Any objection? The Honorable MEC may address the House on the bill. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, members of the Executive Council, members of the Free State Legislature, our local government and traditional leadership, I stand once again on the previous protocol in this House that was observed. Honorable Speaker, I take this opportunity to thank you for giving us this platform to reflect on the 2023 Appropriation Bill. I'll do this in less than five minutes. The budget presented on the 16th of March 2023 seeks to push back socio-economic challenges in the province, to provide for the appropriation of funds from the Provincial Revenue Fund for the requirement of the Free State Province 23-24 financial year, and to provide for matters essential thereto. The 23-24 financial year, the province will be spending more than 41.8 billion rand implementing this government's priorities and over the next three years the MTF we will be spending more than 128.788 billion rand. The equitable share amounts to 31.379 billion, revenue amounts to 1.184 billion, conditional grants which includes infrastructure amounts to 9.280 billion and that makes up the total of 41.8 billion. The Premier and MEC's, MEC's Honourable Speaker have eloquently outlined their budgets and plans in detail during their votes. I will not allude to that again. The preparation of this budget was a joint effort endorsed by EXCO, and despite our enormous challenges and the difficult trade-offs, we believe we will do our best with what we have, and we will realise our vision, our plans, and that has been derived from our social compact, which is government, industry, labour and civil society. Premier, honourable members of the Executive Council, all members of the Provincial Legislature, the Speaker, Deputy Speaker, Chief Whip, Chair of Chairs, Leader of Government Business, Chairpersons of Committees, and all members of committees and this entire Legislature, including the opposition parties, I thank you for supporting the Appropriation Bill B-2023. Kia leboa. Thank you very much. The Acting Chairperson of the Committee on Public Accounts and Finance, Honorable Chabalala, may address the House. Honorable Speaker, let me take this opportunity once more to pass my greetings to the Honorable Premier, the MECs, members of the legislature, Chava Sosle Selo Kelangi Khompo, Lebo Majoru Aruna Lema Kanselara Aruna. Honorable Speaker, the Portfolio Committee on Public Accounts and Finance here which submits its report and the recommendations regarding the appropriation bill, Bill 2, 2023 to the Free State Legislature. The Portfolio Committee would like to thank members of the Executive Council, senior officials from the departments, and the staff of the Legislature for their valuable contribution during the consideration of the bill. And we would like to thank the Honorable MEC for the work done. Uh, the appropriation bill, Honorable Speaker, from the, the money from the Provincial Revenue Fund for the requirements of the Free State Province in 2023-24 financial year and to provide for matters incidental thereto. The bill is informed by the various uh, sections which I would not go through them. Honorable Speaker, allow me to speak of the general observation of the Portfolio Committee. The committee observed with grave concern the, sen the sen 
surrendering of conditional grants to other provinces. A concern is, is, the second concern is that compensation of employees and goods and services exact the most pressure on the budget allocation of the departments. The third concern is that despite rampant financial irregularities in some departments, consequence management is still not enforced towards these transgressors. And it's important that uh, the consequence management is implemented in all various forms of the department. Honorable Speaker, let me also quote one of the quotes and the reason why I'm doing this, Honorable Speaker, it's important that our people should know that uh, we are taking this uh, parliament work very seriously. From one of the books of Amila Cabral, uh, from uh, the, the Revolution in Guinea, the book which was published in 1965, I want to quote, tell no lies, claim no easy victories. Always, I want to quote, always bear in mind that the people are not fighting for ideas, for the things in anyone's head. They are fighting to win material benefits, to live better in peace, to see their lives going forward, to guarantee the future of their children. We should recognize as a matter of conscious that there have been many faults, errors in our actions, whether being political or military. An important number of things we should have done, we have not done at the right time or not done at all. Close quote. Together, lastly, it is important that a revenue enhancement is driven by our exco so that we are able to realize more money and ensuring that we achieve what has been budgeted for. Honorable Speaker. Thank you. The chairperson of the committee <clears throat> on budget and oversight, Honorable Tsiu, may address the House. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, I can sit home for who such a basset thing, I'm gonna leave what she's about looking and then ke uh, ise tlompo hape ho premier um lady member of the executive committee and all the members of the legislature um as the committee on budget and oversight of the legislature we made uh, these findings that notwithstanding the project under the expend the under expenditure which will be prior reprioritized the budget of the legislature is continuously decreasing. With the continuous decrease of the allocation, it will be very difficult for the legislature to fulfill the constitutional mandate, the one uh, that is at section 1142 of performing oversight on the executive. We are however recommending that the committee support the bill the report be adopted by the House. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. The Honorable MEC for Finance may now reply. Honourable Speaker, Honourable Premier, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank both chairpersons of the committees for um, their insight and analysis of the budget. We have noted the positive aspects, implementation of, of budgets, the success of programs and projects must be reported, 
our communications to the people of this legislature is a form of accountability, monthly reporting and revenue enhancement. We also note the challenges, the surrendering of funds to National Treasury, improved import performance, improvements on our communications as a free state province for accountability and consequence management. And as I conclude this process, Honourable Speaker, Honourable Premier, I want to leave you with one example. A commercial property, to purchase one at a bank where their system requires a 20-year loan, we can purchase a home loan in 30 years. You only break even after the 20 or 30 years and you derive benefit only after 20 or 30 years. This is a young democracy. Our capital investment over this period will derive results after we see that the, the break-even has happened and we intend to do that soon. So I thank you for your support, Honourable Speaker, this legislature, <coughs> chairpersons of committees, Premier and the Executive Council. Thank you very, very much. Honourable Members, the question before the House is that the Appropriation Bill B2-2023 be read for the second time. I put the question, those in favour will say aye, and those against will say no. Those in favour? Aye. And those against? The ayes have it. Motion approved. The Secretary shall read the bill for the second time. The appropriation bill number two of 2023. When does the Honourable MEC propose committee stage to be taken? The acting chairperson of committees shall now take the chair. I wish to remind the House of the provision of the standing rules and orders. When the House is in committee stage, I wish to put the votes and the schedule of the bill, then clauses and the short title. Also in the event honorable members want to register their declarations on the vote of the appropriation bill, they must do so in terms of Rule 1948 of the Standing Rules and Orders, 10th edition. I put vote 1 to vote 5. Any discussion? Any objection? I see Honorable Van Fieren, then followed by Honorable Klute. Thank you, Acting Chair of Chairs. Uh, the Democratic Alliance will, would like to object to the first vote, the Premier. The DA objects on the basis that the Office of the Premier is overfunded and fails to provide value for money. Uh, vote 2. Uh, the Free State Legislature, the DA objects on the basis that the Free State Legislature is underfunded and struggles to carry out its constitutional mandate. Uh, vote 3. The Department of Economic Development, Tourism, Small Business. The DA objects because this budget fails our people since the Free State is unable to grow its economy and the FTC that is responsible for bringing in investment is itself in financial ICU. Vote for Treasury. The DA objects on the grounds that the Department continues to allocate funds to municipalities without providing adequate support to manage risk and improve the financial stability. And vote five, health. The DA objects on the basis that funds are not uh, being allocated to service the backlog of orthopedic surger surgeons, surgeries. Thank you, Chair, and I will hand in our objections. Thank you. Honorable Klute.
Thank you, Acting Chair of Chairs. I don't know about the Economic Freedom Front, <laughs> but I do know the objections of the Freedom Front Plus on vote 125. Approved. I put vote 6 to vote 10. Any discussion? No. Any objection? No. Honorable Van Firen, Honorable Klute. Thank you, uh, Acting Chair of Chairs. Uh, vote 6, Education. The DA objects on the basis that the Department failed uh, to deliver a number of schools with electricity, infrastructure, water infrastructure and sanitation facilities and that there are a number of schools where scheduled maintenance projects still need to be completed, although budgeted for. Uh, 7. Social development. The DA objects on the basis that the budget has decreased by 2.6% compared to the 2022-23 financial year. Uh, eight, Department of COCTA. DA will uh, not support the budget because despite receiving a clean audit, the AG also found that the department failed in its mandate to support municipalities. It also failed to manage a provincial disaster management center as required by law. In, uh, it also failed to support additional councils to submit annual financial statements. Nine, public works and infrastructure. The DA objects on the basis that the department has only allocated 113 million for refurbishment despite the higher needs in the province. And 10, police roads and transport. The DA objects on the basis that the allocated budget is not adequate to repair the large scale roads infrastructure deficiencies in the province. Furthermore, a number of contracts remain on hold and the department is not willing to give assurance that they will hand roads over to Sanal. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Flute. Thank you, Acting Chair of Chairs. Please note the objections of the Freedom Front Plus on uh, vote 6 to 10. Thank you. I put vote 11 to vote 13. Any discussion? No. Any objection? No. Approved. Honorable Van Firen, Honorable Klute. Thank you, Chief. Uh, vote 11, Agriculture and Rural Development. This budget is not supported because the department uh, continues to spend funds on uh, new projects while previous projects have failed dismally. Uh, furthermore, farm, farmer support continues to underperform while our subsistence emerging and commercial farmers are in the need of support. Uh, Honorable Van Firen, please take a seat. Chabasa Esu, Kabi Koko Beto Le Trompe Kholo. Ki Atseba Ore, Hama Ikutla Luna Se Hantle, Le Tlakete Le Tzile Kiana Tabata Kan, Tzaka Haran Troya Ketsamala. Ne ke kopa fela hore re fe monyetla ditho ditswele pele ka mosebetsi re se ga participate ke ya lebo You may continue honorable Van Firen Thank you acting chair of chairs uh, vote 12 sports arts culture and recreation the DA objects because this department is failing to deliver quality cultural tourism opportunities and is not able to provide value for money in other areas of responsibility uh, and then 13, human settlements. Human settlements increased. Budget cannot be supported because last year they failed to spend 150 million of the money available despite promises that uh, improvements will be made. The challenges are so huge that we are not convinced that the department will be able to spend the money effectively and efficiently. Thank you, Chief. Honorable Klute. <coughs> Thank you, Acting Chair of Chairs. Just uh, note the objection of the Freedom Front on vote 11 to 13. Thank you. Honorable members, uh, I think I made a, a slight mistake when I put vote 6 to vote 10. I did not mention for the sake of records that it is approved. I put clause 1. Any discussion? Any objection? 
approved. I put clause two on appropriation. Any discussion? Any objection? I put clause three as a short title. Any discussion? Any objection? Approved. I put schedules. Any discussion? Any objection? Approved. What does the Honorable MEC propose? Honorable Acting Chair of Chairs, I propose that the House be informed that the Committee of the Whole House has approved the bill without any amendments. Any discussion? I saw Honorable Members. Any discussion? Any objection? Approved. I will report Honorable Fanfiren, Honorable uh, Klute. Thank you, Chair. Just allow me to put this on record also that uh, overall the DA objects to the appropriation bill of 2023-24 due to the illogical uh, prioritization of funds towards departments that have a poor track record of expenditure. The budget also fails to make provision for the free state to mitigate the impact of the ESCOM crisis on the provincial economy and the people of this province. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Klute. <coughs> No, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair Acting Chair, Chair just uh, note the objections of the Freedom Front Plus as well. Thank you. Thank you. I will report to the House that the bill has been approved without amendments. Then the Speaker shall now take the chair. Honor Honorable Deputy Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Members. The Acting Honourable Chairperson of Committees may report to the House on proceedings during committee stage. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. I wish to report to the House that the Committee of the whole House has approved the bill without amendments. The question before the House is that the bill be read for the third time. I put the question, those in favor will say aye, and those against will say no. Those in favor? Aye. And those against? Aye. The ayes have it. Motion approved. The Secretary shall read the bill for the third time. The appropriation bill number two of 2023. Thank you. Honorable members, this brings us to the end of the business of the House today. Before the House adjourns, I wish to make the following announcement that our guests will remain at their allocated seats while the honorable members leave the House and that all our guests are invited for lunch. The House shall now adjourn until further notice. Thank you. The House is adjourned. <laughs>